Hello and welcome to Be a Tier, the German Engineer. Yes, you caught me live again. Isn't it crazy? Thank you very much for joining everyone who is here already. We have Croc Pro Player, we have Frozen Hair, we have Elfie Wolf, AZBZ, and who else is here? We also have Harutemu. <laughs> Well, it is really nice to see you guys already hanging out in chat and waiting. That is definitely amazing and I love it. I hope you guys are doing well tonight. Well, I would say we have a, a lot of work to do in our game right here. As you can see, I haven't even pressed the spacebar yet. Um, yeah, this here is a loaded safe game. You can see all the error messages are still present, but I think it is time to press the button. Yep. The dupes are running around, and everything looks on the surface pretty good. But, of course, that is just what it looks like on the surface. We have a bunch of issues going on here that we need to resolve right away. Killjoy, how are you doing tonight? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Okay, so, first of all, I was thinking about this construction here one more time. I think um, I misunderstood you guys in the, uh, well, last stream. And there is certainly a better mousetrap. We have, let's take a look here. Next activity, 7.1 cycles. So yeah, we have 7 cycles left to make a little change to the system right here. So I would say we're going to do that right away. Um, yeah, let's just dig back in here. Something like this, something like that. Yes, we already created a vacuum in here. But that is not, that is something we can fix very easily. AZ is enough, but if you want to go by my full name, read it like you would ACDC. <laughs> I will go with AZ, how about that? Uh, Handler, is this a new colony? Yes, it is brand spanking new. Well, actually, this is, I believe, the fourth stream. Uh, this is my stream-only colony. I am uh, not playing it in any other way, shape, or form, which means I'm not playing it, uh, playing it privately, and I'm also not making other YouTube videos out of it. At least not if it's not content taken from a stream. Therefore, yes, this is stream only and only for you guys. Um, brand spanking new. So down here, as I said, we need to dig in here and be a little bit under time pressure. Again, we have seven cycles, which is more than enough time. But better be a little bit careful here. Other than that, we have oxygen issues. Doesn't look that uh, or doesn't look too bad right at this very moment. Um, but, yeah, it'll get bad here very soon. First of all, when we take a look at our algae storage, we are down to two tons. That's not enough. And, as I mentioned several times before, our oxygen diffusers are right beside each other. Obviously, uh, that has to change as well. So we are not going to copy the settings, but actually the entire building. And we are just going to plop it over here. And then we're going to get rid of this one right there. I am not, and that is on purpose and by design, building a third one. Uh, yeah. Let's see, we get rid of this, and yeah, then we can plop this here back in. It should still be okay. Um, oh yeah, before I forget it, last time around you guys gave me a bunch of recommendations for mods, and I installed one of them. When we take a look here into the automation overlay, yes, we have now an output, and it sends here, sends a green signal when its rocket launch checklist is complete. Obviously, that is a uh, slightly wrong tooltip right here, because what it actually does is it sends an output when the egg needs hugging which of course helps us with our cycle sensors right here and gives us a little bit more precision so what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of the cycle sensors right away and then in f2 we need to change this wire here as well um let's see we are going to do it something like this here and something like this here that needs to be done and until all that happens we're just going to cut it off because i don't want these things here to be running and destroying our wire there we go. That's a hell of a lot better. We are going to go, let's see, yes, right here we need to snip this off and we need to snip this off. And then of course, at least for right now, you know what, screw it, we're going to leave it there because we will need it later anyway. Yes, this is what that should look like when we are done with it. Okay, everything is perfectly fine right here yep looking good we have now dug in here so let's see what we have to do first of all of course we're wasting a bunch of energy this pump here has to go right away in the f2 overlay we will not need any kind of wires in here and in f6 we will also not need these particular pipes right here so we're going to get rid of them right away and in the automation overlay 
the, this sensor right here. I actually want to change the sensor and I want to put it a little bit lower. Let's see, can I actually select it, please? Hydro sensor. Oh, we don't have any refined metals. Oof. Severed Ned says um, there's a geo down here. Yes, we have a bunch of oxygen down here. I am actually aware of that. We will use that here very soon. And there's another project coming in uh, this general area right here um, for which we will need it. So right at the moment, our algae terrarium right here will have to get the job done. Come on, dupes. Again, I'm going to set all of these priorities here to number nine because we need to get this here done before this thing comes online. That is highly, highly important. Other than that, once again, we have algae problems. Thankfully, algae is available, not necessarily abundant, but yeah, more than enough for at least our purposes here. So something simple, we're just going to dig into right there and we're going to dig into right here. Here we can directly go to lower. Uh, the dupes cannot reach this here, though, uh, because there is uh, two spaces. Of course, that's not going to fly. So we are just going to plop in one piece of ladder. And over here, we're going to dig this here out as well while we are at it. Very good. Gas pump's dying. Go away, gas pump. You're not needed anymore. Of course, in F7, we also don't need this here. And this here. There we go. All of this has to go. We don't want it anymore. And... While we are at it, over here, our rock crush, I'm going to give it a level a seven priority. And for the next build that I want to do, we will unfortunately need a lot of copper. Yeah, so we are going to give a, a lot of copper here. Um, we're going to put it in there really, really fast. Let's say 90 of them. That should hopefully be enough for everything we need. And oh, yes, before I forget it, <laughs> we are now um, or better to say the quality of life update was actually released, which means yeah, look at this here. We have now all these nice little symbols right here that help us out a little bit with what we are seeing, which is really nice. And on top right here, we have materials and blueprints. So we can come in here now and let's say this row right here in blueprint, we can now select those blueprints that we have unlocked. For example, the Stargazer Cough. We just click on it and it instantly changes. And now I would argue those things here are actually usable. I really hated it before because you had to rebuild it and whatnot. Therefore, I just ignored it. It was just too much work to uh, put into everything else. But now you can just click on it and it just does it at your will. Isn't that nice? So we are definitely going to take a look around and see because I don't even know what I all have unlocked. I have no idea what I can change around here and uh, what I can't. Because again, I have just outright ignored it the entire time. Alrighty. But... All right, now let's uh, work on the important stuff first, I would say. A hydro sensor right here. We can now, well, do I leave it right there? That's the bigger question. Two tiles high that would leave a ton of water down here. I think that's a lot of wood. I think we are going to move it one down, get rid of this one. And then once again in automation, uh, let's just put the wire from here to there. That should get the job done. And for right now, that should be good. There's one more thing that we will need eventually. And that will be the radiant liquid pipe right here. Um, we are going to plop one in here um, just so we have it available. Uh, because there are two things that I want to do. For example, the geotuner, uh, we can use it and just plop a, a steam turbine up here on the top and uh, get some power out of it. Or uh, we can just pump some water or whatever other fluid through here to cool it down. And um, yeah, that should be everything that we should ever need. But first of all, let's get this here all finished up. And when we have it, we're just going to close it back up. And then we are going to create a vacuum. But this time in a slightly smarter way. I don't even know what I was thinking last time around. Maybe too much beer or not enough. I can't tell you. <laughs> you can use the clippers to cut power to the gas pump if you don't want to waste energy. Yeah, you're right. I just assumed with level 9, the dupes are going to come by so fast that it's probably not going to make that big of a difference. Uh, can you see if you can still place the critter drop off by copying it? I only have the new ones on my new game. Oh yeah, that's correct. They also changed the critter drop off. Let's see. Nope. There is a no more copying it. Nope. Does not work. As a matter of fact, it copies the last thing that I have selected. It doesn't even know. It is the building deprecated. So I am assuming it probably doesn't even work anymore. Ah, well, that sucks a little bit. 
how do those new buildings actually work? So we have now a critter pickup and a critter drop off. I'm assuming I need both of them in here. I need to have the drop off so that I don't put more than eight in here. And when I have more than eight due to an egg hatching or something, I need the pickup. Is that how that works? They still work the old way. Like I, I do not have to get rid of these here right now. I don't think I've ever had the case that I had a deprecated building in a base. That's a new one. Hmm. You know what? Screw it. We're just going to leave them here and we will see if um, if they work or not. Deprecated means you cannot make them anymore. You can leave them in the game, though. Okay. All right, then. Very good. That is certainly helpful. All right, guys. As soon as you have this here built, let's turn up the speed just another notch here. All right, last two pieces of pipe are being put in. And now we're going to empty this stuff here out. As soon as all this here is gone, we are going to do something very simple up here. And we can do that actually right now. We are going to build us a manual airlock and we are going to build it probably right around here. Then a mechanized airlock that we're going to plop probably right around there. And then in automation, we are just going to plop us in a temporary automation wire that goes over to right around here. And then a signal switch. Just as simple as that. Of course, one thing is missing in ventilation. Ventilation, I mean, we need a gas pump. And we're going to plop the gas pump. It doesn't really matter too much. Probably right here to get the job done. For that, of course, we will also need a little bit of help. We need a gas pipe. The gas pipe is just going to plop out of here and over here for all I care. And the gas vent. There we go. That should be everything that we need. Well, a wire would be nice. All right, that's it. <laughs> That is it. The new one lets you set them up for each critter type if you have more than uh, more than one critter type in a range. Okay, I see. Can you make hatches into food? Yes, you can build my patent deck critter killer, for example. Uh, or you can just click on them and you can say here attack. They will kill them. Uh, what falls out is meat. And then in here it says here barbecue, which I will set to forever right now. You need 3200 calories of meat. And you will get 4,000 calories of barbecue out of it. So yes, hatches can be made into food for sure. Okay, looks like over here, this here is now done as well. We are going to change this here. We need to come with a, well, once again, no copper available. That sucks a little bit. What we need at the end of the day is in power. We need a power shutoff. And the power shutoff can just live here and there. Just as simple as that. And as soon as we have a little bit of copper, we're going to hook the power uh, shutoff right here up to the output of the incubator. And at that point, this power shutoff here will only provide power if the egg here actually needs to be hugged. It's literally this simple. And that is what makes it very nice as well. How are you guys doing down here? All right, looking a hell of a lot better. Let's close it off. Very, very nice. And then once again, we're at number nine priority, please. Let's get all of this here done. Very, very good. Crucial question. What's your favorite beer? That is a crucial question. Um, that depends on, are we talking about the United States? Then it's Yingling. If we're talking about Europe, then it is uh, the beer of my hometown in Germany. Um, we have a small brewery in my hometown. It's just a tiny little city of like 10,000 people living there. And obviously, I may be biased here. And they make some really good beer. I'm in the same metal crisis fear. I need to tame my copper volcano, but don't have the materials to do it. Yep, that happens. And especially since we haven't really dug down yet since I decided potentially stupidly to go upwards first to get rid of our carbon dioxide. Yeah, um, all we have is unfortunately the rock crusher over here. And that is about all we can do as of this moment. All right, guys, come on. Build my stuff, please. Thank you. Just the door is missing, the gas pump, and two more pieces of wire. Come on, dupes. Let's turn up the speed so that I get this here done. And then, the last thing that we need is right here. This insulated tile, we are going to deconstruct it. Yes, we're going to have debris in here, but I honestly don't care about it. 
Radix says, greetings. Greetings to you as well, Radix. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, found your channel just as you left your last series. Good seeing you back. Watching you take another dupe to feed instead of fry mushrooms worth more calories than you had in a total made me nervous. Ah, you know. A little bit of risk, a little bit of reward. Sometimes you just gotta weigh it out properly, right? But I'm uh, truly happy that you are still here, even though you didn't find my channel until I, well, was gone or disappeared from the face of the earth there for a little while. But yes, as you can see, now we are back, just in a slightly different format. Alright, so, right at the moment, what did I do here? I plopped the gas pump up here, which gives us this entire area up here, and down here as well. Right here we have a mechanized airlock. The mechanized airlock right here I can control with the signal switch. I can open it and close it at will. If I close it, this down here will be completely sealed off. If I open it, the gases can flow freely through the door and into here. And with the gas pump, I'm just pumping it out. This is the easiest way, most likely the easiest way, or at least the easiest way that I can think of, <laughs> to create a vacuum in a closed off area like this here. Now we're just going to let this here pump until this here is completely and 100% empty. It's literally this simple. As soon as that is done, we are just going to turn our switcher to off. The door will close. We're going to rip out this manual airlock right here. And then the dupes can build a tile right here through this corner right there. And then, yeah, then we have a vacuum in here. Isn't that simple? Uh, right here. I almost forgot. I was just thinking. I hope I put a pipe in here. Thankfully, I did already last time around. Very, very nice. So that should work just fine. Uh, you don't need to lock it. You can unclick both arrows. You are very right. I could just get rid of these here and no dupe will come through. But it doesn't really matter too much, to be quite honest, because I'm going to uh, deconstruct it anyway as soon as we have achieved our vacuum. Okay, guys, are you actually... Okay, dupes can't go again over here. I was just wondering. My algae is at 5.1 tons, but I expected it to be slightly more. Yes, this area here is why I expected it to be slightly more. Other than that, we have a little bit more algae right here, but 5.1 tons are pretty neat. Let's take a look into our F4 overlay. We still have a bunch of carbon dioxide right here. We are letting this pump here run a little bit longer before we switch back to the bottom pump. But at the moment, it looks pretty good. Red X says, I just finished my bike ride in a way, gaining some athletics attribute as your dupes. <laughs> yes, that is literally how it works. <laughs> Destroyer of Worlds, hello, hello to you as well. And Jason, interesting idea. I never had the drive to do anything but seal those off. Yeah. Um... This year, I'm pretty sure at least something like this here was mentioned during the last stream and I just completely misunderstood my own chat, which is uh, kind of sad, uh, and I apologize for that. But yeah, this here is definitely a better mouse trap. You just um, put all temp, sh temp shift plates here in the back uh, for the beginning until these here heat up, and that is the reason that the temp shift plates go all the way out to the insulated tiles. E the, insula the temp shift plates will transfer the heat into the, into the insulated tiles, and that will take a long, long time. So, yeah. Um, we can survive probably a couple hundred cycles here without a problem. Without having anything going through this pipe here. And it should still condense without an issue. Uh, other than that. All these here are made out of sandstone. The rest is all igneous rock. Yes, we are definitely going to go igneous rock all the way. So I'm going to have the dupes change these here over right away to igneous rock. Um, they're not going to tear them out for that, which is really, really nice. Oh yeah, there's another thing that I wanted to test. Now that the quality of life update is here, let's just... Um, what do we have sitting around here? I uh, should probably not test it on the oxygen diffuser, quite honestly. And I don't have anything for the incubator. Um, what do we have? You know what? This gas pump right here, if I go to material, it says here copper times 50. I can change material, and I really hope the game doesn't die now. And, of course, we have a wonderful screen of death as every single time there is a new update. Uh, well, we will be right back. Uh, should have seen that one coming, but I had to test it because otherwise we will never know. Isn't that nice? Don't worry, guys, you should have a picture again any second. Now the game is already loading back in. 
because I'm wondering if we change our material, will they actually deconstruct it or will they just build over it? That is my bigger question here. Oh damn, guess it's good I never tried it yet. Yep, newly disabled. Apparently Thermal Tooltips was uh, responsible for it. Uh, let's make sure that is actually the culprit. I'm going to click it again. Let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. Whew, that was a close one. All right. Let's see, if I switch this here from copper ore to literally anything else and I order the rebuild. It says here rebuild, so that makes me think they're going to tear it out and going to plop in a new one. Let's see if that is actually the case. And let's see what kind of progress we have lost here. Okay, of course my igneous rock building right here was uh, annihilated. Other than that, my ladder is still here. And that should be everything we have done. So we didn't really lose a hell of a lot. I used to have future in the beta, worked fine. They would bring resources and then it just goes changed. So it did not get deconstructed. Okay, that would be actually very, very nice. But we're going to test it here, live on stream anyway, because we're going to rip this here soon out either way around. So it doesn't matter, we're just going to try it. That looks a hell of a lot like uh, tearing it out. That looks a hell of a lot like deconstruction right here. I guess we will see in a second. Yep, they definitely tore it out. And here was this tiny little piece of copper, and now they're gonna build a new one. And that makes it uh, definitely less useful than I expected it to be. At that point, I can just manually deconstruct it and just rebuild it with the material I want. That actually pretty much sucks, honestly. Yeah, that is actually not helpful in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> not sure if that's supposed to be. Yeah. They must have changed it, apparently. Either that or, or they, actually, they uh, accidentally introduced a bug. But yes, in this state as it is right now, it changes absolutely nothing. Yeah. It maybe saves me clicking one mouse click or two. And that's about all of it. But okay. That is why we test shit around here. Because otherwise, we will never know. <sighs> Alright. How are we looking in here? Up here on the top, we already have a vacuum in a couple of spaces. No, we don't. Okay, there we go. Now we have a nice overview here. Seven grams left. That's fine. How is our F1 overview looking? Yeah. Now we are slowly and steadily getting to this point, and I anticipated that because we do have now 16 dupes and only two oxygen diffusers, which means obviously we should have more than three, which means we should have four oxygen diffusers to keep up with all of our dupes. Obviously, we only have two. So we need to do something about that more or less right away. And I think the best place is right beside our water tank over here on the left side. And of course, what we are going to build is a full Rodriguez. And you're probably wondering, why in the hell would you build a full Rodriguez? There is no way you can power all this. Well, we are not going to run the entire thing. We are just going to run what we need. So, let's see what we actually need for this endeavor. In ventilation. We are going to get started with the gas pumps on the bottom, because that gives us a nice layout. We are going to put two in, four in, and six in. So it's going to be exactly this wide. On the bottom, we need insulated tiles. We're going to come all the way over to here. We need to go up three. Then we need a total of four airflow tiles on top of that. Something like this here. And two manual airlocks here and there. In the middle, two more tiles, insulated tiles. Any tiles for that matter, doesn't matter at all. And then let's see an oxygen. We have not even unlocked it yet. <laughs> let's go into research before we do anything else. And let's see here in... I uh, don't even know exactly where that's at. In liquids right here, we have the electrolyzer. So let's put a little bit of haste on that, and we are going to unlock unlock us at the electrolyzer. These just live right there. Of course, that's not all of it. We will need one more pump. In ventilation, we are going to put another gas pump up here onto the top. There we go. Um, actually, it goes one lower, my mistake. There we have it. That's where you live. And then insulated tiles all the way to right there, and all the way over. And that is as simple as we build a full Rodriguez. Of course, there's a bunch of piping and stuff that, like that missing. But for right now, we are just building the outline. On top of that, 
Let's take a look underneath here because we will need power and currently our only power source are our, our uh, cold generators over here. So let's see right here. Let's make it straight four high. There we go. And let's come all the way over to right there. Yep, the dupes can come in here, no problem. And then they should be able to dig all of this here out for us. Of course, with the exception of this area right here. Because, well, they cannot really walk on nothing. That is an issue. So temporarily, let's plop in some ladders everywhere where we have an empty spot. And even right here, we're going to dig out that ice. All right. That should give them plenty to do for right around now. Um, right here and right here. Another ladder. So they come here straight across. And this year, we are not even going to start building it yet. We're just going to ignore it for a tiny little bit longer. Uh, did you go to the material tab and change material there? Let's see. Material? You mean right here? Yes, that is exactly what I did. Um, I went to change material and I changed it from copper over to iron. We can do it one more time if you want. We can go back to copper. And it says you just order rebuild. Um, or do I just select it and do nothing else? How about that? Is that a thing? No. No, I need to order rebuild. And it even says it here. Deconstruct this building and rebuild it using the selected material. So yeah, that is the only way. Uh, the two tiles in the middle placed up one more space is apparently more efficient. To put these here, one tile further up. Can't say I've ever tried that, but let's see. I guess it is more efficient because we have one tile less that we have to mess with. The dupes can still walk through here. Yeah, I can see an argument for that. I certainly can. Let's try it. First thing that happens is we can always do it again. No, try to use the cold. Use the cold of what? forgot that is a frozen world it must have changed then that sucks yes it really does um if it would work exactly like we just did right here with the insulated tiles now that would be a benefit that would be actually a positive change but just introducing that material change button is actually not helpful at all because just tearing it out and building it with something else i can do that manually i mean it doesn't make a difference in any way shape or form in my opinion but very good, the dupes are slowly but steadily digging their way through here, and they also already started on the other side, which of course now they can't reach anymore. Oh, you dupes. So let's come all the way up here, and tear out this one tile right here, just so it's nice and straight. And then they can walk over here, and down along here, and we can start tearing these four tiles here out all across from both ends. That should make it nice and efficient, and just like in a real tunnel building, uh, the two groups should be meeting roughly in the middle. How much longer do we have? 5.4 cycles. Oh yeah, that is going to be no stress over here at all. No problem. Uh, I disagree. Doing it manually has a built-in delay as you can't assign the new construction until the deconstruction is completed. Eh, yeah, I guess. You're not wrong. I agree. It can be a slight benefit, I guess. But still, though. You know, why not just do it like the normal tiles? Wouldn't that make a hell of a lot more sense? I was writing about a four-tile height corridor. We can dig less and use it to lower the temperature of the oxygen using radiant pipe. Uh, yes, that is actually a problem, or actually the idea for the very beginning right here. Um, that we are just using the environment for a little while to cool down the oxygen. But yes, for right now, truth is it doesn't really matter too much. Alright, slowly but steadily, I will tell him to put in this ladder right here all the way to the top, something like this here, and then give a dick command all the way through. And of course, can't forget about it, to here to there, so the dupes can actually get in and out of our building area. I have a good feeling uh, that a dupe will get stuck in here, so we need to keep a close eye on it, that is for sure. And of course, we also need to make sure that our dupes are not dying anywhere from uh, 
lack of oxygen, but I think we are fine. And before I forget it, this here's the build I mentioned earlier. We need to come down here all the way. Maybe not in there, even though it doesn't matter. I know digging up doesn't make a difference, but we're just going to dig to right here and let the oxygen come slowly but steadily up here. And then over here on the right, we have this nice pocket that we will dig out when all this oxalite here is gone. Or better to say, when this oxalite here disappears, this here will be released anyway, if we like it or not. So that is precisely what we are going to do. And what do we have here? Ice. Go away, ice. Nobody wants you right now. Rob says, love your tutorial. Thank you. No, thank you for watching him. And I'm really glad that I could help out in your game. That makes me really happy. Not going to lie about it. Okay, dupes, what are you doing? How about we uh, increase this here to the old number seven? And today we're going to test once again if the seven actually makes a difference. And as a matter of fact, right here, the ladder, we're going to come with the ladder, uh, with the ladder all the way through here. So the dupes don't have to go around here, but they can just come into here as well. That should also make it a tiny little bit more efficient. Um, right here. Are we getting more bristle blossoms in slowly but steadily? Yes. How about our mealwood right here? Body temperature is 9 degrees. What is our water temperature down here? Um, oh yeah, it's because we are currently pumping this water right here, which is extremely cold. That is actually fine though. There's barely any left. We're just gonna let it run. It's not gonna kill us. I hope, at least. And then we're gonna switch it back over to our main water tank. It's that simple. That should be totally fine. I will keep an eye on that, though, uh, just to make sure. But again, there's barely anything left here. Shouldn't cause us too much trouble. Theoretically, I, could, I just could turn this pump here on and there's uh, one blob of this water, one blob of that water. But it's really not, not worth the extra energy right now. We can heat this here back up in absolutely no time. Okay, what else? Right here. Do we have now enough for the automation wire? I think we do. The automation wire now needs to go like this. And this one here needs to be torn out. And that should then make our two incubators here functional once again as well. Very, very good. What is going on with you guys here? You are cramped because there is an egg laying around. We really need access to the auto sweeper to get uh, solve this problem here for good. But right at the moment, let's just plop you up here because we only have a six on the top. Very nice. Soon we will have this hatchling right here though. Uh, we are at 77%. Um, that should actually be next cycle, as soon as we get power to this incubator right here. Somebody should come hug it, and then we should go up drastically with the amount of uh, incubation that we get per cycle, and that should be 25%. Alright. Now, two other things that we will need, though. Because right here, we will have two materials coming out of here, obviously. One of them is hydrogen, up here in the top. And we will have oxygen down here in the bottom. And, um, yeah. Uh, wouldn't it be good to turn second pump on to put some water in tank? Uh, the water is going in the tank. Uh, oh, do you mean this tank here, the liquid reservoir? I guess we could do that. Let's see. Did I just snip that off? No, I didn't snip it off. But in F6, we can snip this here off for right now. And then can turn this here on just for a tiny little bit. Not too long, though. Definitely doesn't hurt to have some water in our liquid reservoir. You're totally correct about that. But again, also trying to save us a little bit of energy. We do have 19.1 tons of coal, so we are actually gaining. We are net positive in coal because of our two hatch wrenches here, so that is a very, very good thing. And as we learned the last time around, if we don't turn this here up drastically, this egg here will actually never be moved. <laughs> so let's do that. How are we looking? Still no uh, complete vacuum here. It's 38 uh, milligrams down here on the bottom. 500 milligrams. Yeah, it takes a little bit with a normal gas pump, but what choice do we have? Obviously, we also don't have only this area anymore. Our area is now increased by this size here up on the top. So we got to account for that as well. But we still have 4.8 cycles, so we will have a vacuum long, long before this thing here comes uh, out of dormancy. No problem at all. How's our tunnel looking? Tunnel is coming along slowly but steadily. Very nice. Yeah, we're looking pretty decent. Now, 
Um, while we watch our plants here slowly but steadily dying all across the board. <laughs> uh, there's one more thing. Up here in the top, we have this natural gas geyser right here. What we are trying to do is, let's see, what would be a good position for it? We have all this ice right here that we could actually dig up. I'm trying to get to this natural gas geyser right here from the bottom instead of from the top. And yeah, let's see, how can we do this in a four? We have a bunch of oxygen up here. Hmm. What would be a good way to do this? Let me think about this for a second. If we dig, for example, right here, straight down, we should need five tiles. We have five kilograms of pressure. And then right here on the bottom, we build a two tile high corridor over. And then right here with the ladder, just straight down. And we don't need that much though. A matter of fact, we're going to dig up a bunch of stuff here. We don't need this abyssalite that is um, not doing us really any good. So we're actually going to make this here lower. Something like this here, maybe. Let's get rid of this stuff. And then right here with the ladder, going to come down here into this corridor and then back up. Obviously, this corridor is going to be a ladder eventually. So let's put that in right away. Yeah, I think that should work. We can't put it in right away because we need to fill this area here with carbon dioxide. Which, well, should hopefully happen more or less by itself. We will see how that goes. But yeah, other than that, that should get the job done. Let's try this out. Going in from the bottom instead of usually from the top. Should work just fine, I believe. Alright, the first tiles are being built. And our LG count is at 6.1 tons. Do we have a little bit more sitting around of this stuff? Let's see, anywhere... Oh yeah, down here actually. And please guys, make your own life a little bit easier and put in this ladder so you get more access to oxygen and you don't constantly have to run around like this trying to find a tiny little bubble somewhere where you can take a single breath. Ah, you dupes. I wish I had a little bit of AI built in so I understand what the plan is here. But unfortunately, they don't. As we all know. Let me do have a little bit of oxygen sitting around right here, but I don't have access to it. Let's dig out this tile here as well as soon as we get there. And then the oxygen that is in here, which is actually 2 kilograms, that's quite a lot. Another 2 kilograms right below it, so 2 tiles worth of 2 kilograms that the dupes currently cannot reach in any way, shape or form. Which food are you using for feeding hatches? Uh, let's take a look here. Over here, our critter feeder is just set to sandstone on the bottom because that's our normal hatch wrench. And up here on the top, we are at sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock because, well, as you can see, we are trying to get us some stone hatches. That is the general idea. And then we are going to build us a, a third one. As a matter of fact, why am I not starting with that? Right here. We are just going to go ahead and we're going to build us one more stable all the way over to right here. There we go. We need to, of course, then come through here as well. All this here is very low priority. Nobody cares when and how the dupes are doing it. We just can't build all this here in. There we go. Hopefully you don't get stuck over here. Or would that matter any other dupe. Not entirely sure where you're actually going. Where are you going, Sin? You're grabbing this sedimentary rock up here. Okay. Um, so apparently that's our only source of sedimentary rock right now over here. And there's quite a lot of it. So we need to dig actually a little bit further and extend our ladder. So we can still reach this when we need it. That's fine. At least for right now. And we can get rid of all of this here as well. But again, very low priority. I do want this here to go a little bit higher though. Come on guys. Build me my wires. So at least this project here is completed. And now we have uh, 2.6 tons in our liquid reservoir. That's good. And this pump right here. Okay, let's see, it still says 999 kilograms, and now we are going down. All the water from the sides has drained down as much as it goes. So this pump here will be done very, very soon, and we gotta be ready for it. Otherwise, our nice loop here will go dry. You can try using the creature changer to obtain a stone hatch. Well, yes, but 
right here. We already have a stone hatchling egg. Actually two, as a matter of fact. There's already a second one. So we actually are way ahead of the game here. Um, a crit off looks so matic right here. Uh, that is, of course, what Croc Pro Player is talking about. Um, may need to use that later, but for right at the moment, we should be okay. We can activate it though, I guess. Uh, but other than that, we are golden. Now, come on, dupes. Get this ladder here done right away. So we have that ready. Are these weight sensors on the critter thingies? Uh, those sensors you mean right here? These here are power shutoffs. Uh, so I actually have currently a mod installed. Let's see here. I hope it still works <laughs> with this new update. Um, we have here a, a green connector that goes through. And it says here, allow power through the connected circuits. But we have no power. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Earlier I disconnected this here. Because our wire here will fry the moment I connect it. Um, how are we going to do this? I'm going to cut it right there. And connect it right here. So, we can actually watch it in real time, David. Right here, right now, this incubator right here has now power. And it has power. Let's see. Finally, so much better than using the timers. This is not in the game. This is actually a mod uh, that was recommended to me by... Can't remember who in the um, chat um, in the last stream. So I tried it, downloaded it, and yeah, it works like a charm. So right now, we have the output. The output comes over, turns off the power shut off the moment it is lullabied. And when the lullaby buff goes away, uh, at that moment, our power turns back off. Which is, that is exactly how it should be in the game, in my opinion. That would be a real quality of life update right there. And now we can do the second one. Now they won't be on the same schedule anymore. And that should be just fine. Maybe try using it for smooth hatches before constructing the metal refinery. Yeah, we can try that. We can certainly try that. Uh, truth is, I've actually never used this thing here. I've read about it, but I've never used it. So uh, that would be a good trial, I guess. So let's get it activated and let's see what it actually wants from me. All those story buildings. So didn't we have another one? Yeah. All these story buildings here and stuff like that. I haven't really used any of them. Grabita shipping container. No idea. I'm assuming there's a dupe in here because it says knock knock. But other than that, I don't really know too much about these buildings here. So if you have any tips on that, I'm always happy to accept them. Okay, in our F4, we can see those single pockets of oxygen floating around here, which is, of course, a very good thing. And slowly but steadily, our Rodriguez here is also coming together. Very good. Once again, F1 overlay. What happened with you over here? Oh, I never copied the number 9 setting over. Of course. Uh, that would be highly important. Dupes, you actually feed this thing here. And right here, choose a blueprint. We are not going to get another dupe. I'm not even going to look at them. Otherwise, I will just be sad if it's a really good one. We are grabbing this care package right here. And we're going to grab us three tons of sand. Free dupe who's basically great at anything. I'm sure you're not going to get that thing for free. I'm sure there's a bunch of steps you have to... Or a bunch of hoops you have to jump through. But we will find that out very soon. First of all, though, we need to make sure our colony is in good shape. And for that, we will need power and we will need oxygen. Uh, at that point, we will be good to go to explore. I would leave it for you to find out. Oh, I'm sure we will. Uh, waiting for a critter. Analyze critters to transform base morphs into random variants of their species. Okay, so you cannot actually choose, huh? There's no config. There's no blueprint. Okay. Um, the question is now, how exactly do I get a critter in here? I collected species data. Can I just uh, grab one of those things here? Or do I build a critter drop off in here? I'm assuming that's probably the appropriate solution. Or does it need eggs? Unfortunately, none of those things here has a database entry. And it doesn't really tell us a hell of a lot. Let's see. Oops, I have uh, done that story quest once and don't recall all the hoops. But there are hoops. <laughs> Create a drop-off works, or just drop one in. Move two. Okay, 
Let's just take a critter. Do we have a good one down here? Uh, in that bit, a good one, I mean a very old one. Like this one here. It is age 95. We're going to use the move to command. And we are going to bring it, well, into this room here. And we're going to do it with a number 9 priority. And we're just going to watch what happens. Again, I couldn't tell you what it does. I have never tried it myself. Okay. Slowly but steadily, making progress. How is this year coming along? 3.8 cycles, and yeah, we are getting lower here with our carbon dioxide. Slowly, I'm getting worried here. We haven't really lost a hell of a lot since the last time around. Actually, we are in the microgram area, so it should be okay. It needs power? No, it doesn't need power. Doesn't really say anything. Doesn't really have a hookup. In F6 and F7, it has nothing either. Just gonna throw it in there, see what happens. Other trick is just to dump eggs in there and let them hatch. Well, that makes sense. Power. Does this building need anything? It doesn't look like it. Not that I can tell. Nothing in F2, nothing in F6, nothing in F7. Don't see anything. It is a self contained building. That is definitely good to know. Uh, how about I press the space bar? Wouldn't that be helpful? So yeah, once again, our two eggs, or our two incubators here, are now uh, powerless, and our eggs are lullabied. So now, as mentioned earlier, uh, we have now a total change per cycle of 25%, which will give us our first stone hatchling um, right after, well, the cycle right here. We have more eggs, more hatch eggs, and we're just going to grab those. Let's see, how many of those things do we have here? Here we have one. And here we have one. We're going to get rid of both. New species scanned. Okay. Um, it says here, waiting for a critter. Now the critter is over here. Now what, though? Collected species data. So I need to put five critters in there? Okay. We will. Uh, let's grab another one. Let's see here. A, a rather old one, preferably. Once again. H90. That'll do the job. Come over here. And plop it in there. Why are you unreachable, though? Can I not send a dupe over there? No, apparently it can go through the machine. Cannot go through the machine, I mean. So we could theoretically just come around here and grab us our hatchback. Five different critters? It needs five species scanned, if I remember correctly. Five different morphs or five completely unique species. Five different ones, so I can't just cancel this command right here, I guess. Uh, that's gonna. So, does a stone hatch count as a different one, or do we actually need five completely different critters? Let's see here. Are we talking morphs, or are we talking actual species? Completely different. Oh, wow. Yeah, that'll be a problem on Rhyme. I guess we can uh, try to grab us one of those uh, voles up here in the top. Um, what else have we running around? We have a poke shell running around. There's not a hell of a lot else here, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, you are now here. What do we have in here? Six. And here we have six. You are age 90. Doesn't matter. You can go into the top one. And let's do it with a high priority so you actually get it back in there where you belong. There we go. Catch, Draco, etc. Keep the water loop in mind. Oh my god, good call. Where's our water loop? It's completely empty. <laughs> yeah, I was so focused on uh, critters um, that I completely forgot about it. Water loop, hook it back up, and then rip all of this here out in F6, in F2, and of course the pump itself. Don't need it anymore. And while you're at it, Let's mop this stuff. There we go. That should immediately be helpful, I hope. Our water loop is not going to be dry for long, which means the main thing is right here, our lavatories and our sinks, and of course, down here on the bottom, our bristle blossoms. So the water should be flowing once again. Let's feed it through there. I'm going to speed the game up just a notch here so we can actually get our loop here filled again. There we go. 
all the way through. We're coming in with 10 kilograms and we're coming back out with 9.7. So currently our plants here really don't need a hell of a lot of water, which is of course a very good thing. Starvation. Uh, okay. Starvation could mean that a dupe is stuck somewhere. So yeah. Thank you very much, uh, very much, uh, Josh, Yoss. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Definitely butchered that one either way around, though. Truly appreciate that, because I would have forgotten about the water loop. There is no way in hell uh, that I could deny that. <laughs> in oxygen, we already have our electrolyzers now. I'm going to plop those in as well. Very nice. Very good. And a few more other things while we are already here. Everything else has been built yet. In automation, we will need three Atmos sensors in uh, that particular configuration right there. Well, the top one actually doesn't matter too much. And right here, some automation wires going left and right on the bottom. And then right here for our top hump. And this time around, I want to go one step further because right here, yep, all of these here get their own signal switch. Just as simple as that. So we can turn them on and off at will, depending on how much we have available. I had only four toilets for 20 dupes in my base, and they are on different schedules. Absolutely. You can most definitely do that, there's no question about it. But the thing is though, they don't cost anything other than the copper ore that they're built out of. And it's just nice to have a few more. It just looks better. Even though we are not here to win a beauty prize, definitely it's uh, more aesthetically pleasing, if you like. Some dupes have the bottom of the stomach trait and need 1.5 times the food as normal dupe. So end of the day, they are starving. Very annoying. Took me some time to figure it out. Yeah, that sounds about right. And um, we also have a new blueprint unlocked, I'm just seeing. So I would say, let's take a look here. What are we getting out of this thing? We are getting basic black gloves. Well... Not that exciting, I guess, but now we have them. And it's blue again, so we're going to wait a little bit. And we're going to take another look at another blueprint here. Hey, Beer, could you confirm for me which tile I shouldn't mine on the volcano to keep it inactive? Yes, I can. Uh, you have, usually at least down here, your four tiles of neutronium. You're going to go from your neutronium, the second from the left, and then two tiles up. So this tile right here should not be mined to keep it inactive. All the others around can be mined out. Basic black goes with everything. That is correct. <laughs> All right. Cool steam vent. 3.0 cycles. Are we yet in a vacuum? We are almost. Is it enough though? I really need you to pump a tiny little bit more here. Let's just let it sit for a little bit eventually. I hope it should come up. Okay, thank you. I got worries when my volcano said it was rising in pressure. Yeah, they all say that. Well, this one is actually dormant right now. But usually they all say that. <laughs> um, if you can click on them. As long as this one tile here is uh, still intact, it will rise in pressure. But the pressure can't go anywhere because this is the outlet. A tunnel right here. Not much progress is being made here. In F4, the carbon dioxide here is now very low. So in F2, we're going to stop this pump here now. Those 240 watts we're going to save us. And in F1, uh, we are still looking okay. Again, it's not as nice and blue as you would expect it to be or as you want it to be. But it is more than enough to keep our dupes alive. And that is, of course, always the goal. Uh, can I get rid of this here? Yes. And the colony achievement as well. You know what? As a matter of fact, colony achievement. Um, let's go ahead and let's do take a look at our colony summary. What do we have? Royal flush. Uh, and hatch a new critter from an egg. Huh. Well, we sure as hell did that. Of course, here is now our stone hatchling. And it's currently just sitting here because it has nowhere to go. So, uh, let's just leave it there for a second. And let's put a little bit of a higher priority on uh, this area right here. Let's say a 8. And let's build all of this here. And now we can actually try this new critter drop-off thing. I guess. We have the critter drop-off. We still need that. I guess if... We, I still don't understand the purpose here. The critter pickup. I guess if I have an egg in there. And that egg hatches. 
then it will pick automatically one up? I guess so. We're gonna build both, just for testing purposes, if nothing else, and a grooming station. And that should be all that we can do right now, because I do know there is a new building, isn't there, as well, for happiness or something? Oh yeah, it's all the way over here. And we don't have access to that until we have applied sciences. And yes, we definitely have to deal with the radiation here very soon as well. And for right now, we're just going to leave that space already in here for this new building. It should be 4x4, four four, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Very, very good. This here is what we need. And rather faster than slower. That would be nice. Then we can take our little hatchling here and put it into the top where it belongs. Then we have two hatch wrenches, which we probably will reduce soon to one of them. And then here on the top, we will have stone hatches. Smooth hatches will probably just go in the middle or on the bottom, something like that. It doesn't matter. But that is at least the general idea right now. Yeah, slowly but steadily, this base here actually looks like something. Uh, I just put the drop off at the normal place and the wrangling one on the other side of the doors because it will still be in the same room so it counts the critters. Does a critter have to go to it uh, to actually be wrangled? So if I build it over here, does the critter have to go there? Like I said, I just don't know exactly how the mechanic works. With pickup you can set the max of that species. The auto wrangle feature is only on the old deprecated object. Okay. It's useful to move morphed hatches like remove only the sage or the stone from the ranch. Well, or you have an auto sweep and just remove all eggs. That is where we eventually will end up, I guess. But okay, the dupes are building happily away. That's very good. No, the critter doesn't have to go there. Okay, that is good information to have. Thank you for that. I had no idea, obviously. Also, this ladder here. Nobody needs it. Get rid of it. And the truth is, though, also the digging here on the top has to be a number 8 priority, if you like it or not, because otherwise we will not be able to build the roof. As a matter of fact, we don't need the roof right now, do we? We don't need to actually build this here. Ah, well, I will save us some resources for right now. Very nice. And the temperature in here doesn't matter that much either. The only thing that we can't have, of course, is this open tile right here. That will interfere with our operations. And this door here we will lock. There we have it. That's now more like it. Yeah, but there's nice copper in that roof. Yes, very true. There is nice copper in that roof. But uh, we will keep that as a uh, piggy bank for later. <laughs> All right. Um, why are you... Okay, I know why. Because we still don't have this one tile here on the top right. Unreachable build, of course. We first need to dig our way over there before we can do anything. So let's see if we can get that done. I'm going to turn up the speed for that just for a second. And look at this. Slowly but steadily, we are also getting more bristle blossoms in. That's very nice. You're still at only 13,000 calories, though. Still just scraping by. But that is okay. That is totally fine. There we go. Now build me my tile. Please. Of course. Didn't increase that single priority. Who could have seen that coming? And now somebody. My tile, please. Critter drop off. Critter. Where's my stone hatchling? Maximum number of eight. Very good. And now, to set this critter pickup here properly up, do I just select stone hatchlings just like before and say once again maximum eight? Is that how I do this? Ensures the, per, uh, the prompt relocation of critters that exceeds the maximum amount set. I would assume so. That would mean I set it to whatever I have in there. And I'm telling it, hey guys, if there are more than eight in there, Snatch one out of there. I guess that is what that means then. Yes, indeed. I like it. There we go. Now this here should be stable number 03. 
And then of course the critter feeder right here. We will have to set it to stone hatchlings. Uh, let's see who are my stone hatchlings or stone hatches for that matter. And we can feed it any of those ores right here. So let's take a look into our ore site and see what we actually have available. We have 92 tons of copper, 30 tons of aluminum ore, 6 tons of gold. So of course right at the moment we have the most copper and we're going to feed him copper. So we get of course a wonderful smooth hashes out of these things. So not aluminum, I said copper. There we go. Let's feed him some copper. I think you're going to need to add mature ones too. I don't have the mature ones yet because I don't, well, have them yet. Um, they only are available the moment you actually have them for the first time, which is hopefully soon. But for right now, it's only hatchlings. Aluminum and gold have special uses. Yeah, of course, I would never feed those to stone hatches. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I was just uh, taking a look how much I have. I never considered to actually feed them to that. <laughs> Okay, are you guys ready to actually build some stuff down here, please, for the love of God? There we go. Here, more and more copper was being picked up. Where are you actually going with it, though? Where are you going, Jimmy? Are you going to build? Yes, you are. Okay, good. So, this here... We need all of that. We can already get ready for the uh, next exercise, though, because the next exercise is our hydrogen. Eventually, we will take our hydrogen and we, of course, will um, uh, pump out some energy with it. What are those things called? Hydrogen generators. <laughs> Who could have seen it coming? Um, I want to store the hydrogen somewhere in the meantime, though. And for that, an infinite storage is always a good idea, in my opinion. So let's plop us in a very quick uh, infinite storage. More of these. And where do we have our gas pumps? Two of those. And then, of course, a little bit of insulated tile all around it. Something just like this. So the dukes can actually get in. Build this ladder all the way down. And you know, while you're at it, get rid of all this stuff here as well. There we go. Now the dupes can actually then walk along here straight as well. However they please. That should be helpful in the long run. And you know what? Just for funsies, let's put some uh, pieces of ladder in here so they can go along the top, whatever they deem most efficient. Okay, slowly but steadily, we are getting somewhere right here. Of course, before I forget it, and I'm prone to forgetting that, uh, we need in ventilation some pipes. Because right here, if I don't put the pipes in right away, then later on we will not have access to it anymore. All right, right at the moment, we still do, so might as well. If we find like a hydrogen vent, if we won't have, we can just route it back to this infinite storage or we build us another one. Either way around though, it doesn't matter. Something like this here is always helpful for an infinite storage. Uh, to have access from all directions, always a good thing. Obviously right here, we would have to come back into our Rodriguez, but going back in here with like a liquid lock, for example, is no problem at all. So we are ready to roll whenever we want to. Just as simple as that. Uh, why do you try farm smooth hatches? Uh, to get refined metals by feeding normal metals. Yep, that's exactly it. Uh, smooth hatches, so right at the moment what I'm doing is, so we are feeding the hatches sedimentary rock, which gives us stone hatches. Then I'm feeding the stone hatches some uh, metals, so they become smooth hatches. And with smooth hatches, when I when I feed those then metals, they excrete no coal, but refined metals. So that's a uh, relatively good method of getting refined metals without having to use a refinery in the beginning. Which, clearly, uh, we are pretty far away, as we can see right here. That is as low as we have gotten in our base so far. And as soon as we have this year completed, and we get the, have our power situation here stabilized on the right, uh, we then can go down there and we can see what we can tear up next. How are we doing up here, by the way? Of course, the priority is now so low up here on the top that we are not actually making it into our natural gas here. And this thing is idle. Um, yeah, let's give this here a little bit of a higher priority. Just a little bit. So we can actually start getting more carbon dioxide in here. Currently, all this here is oxygen. 
but I do want carbon dioxide in here. Hmm. You know what? Let's actually do it completely different. It's actually a good thing that they haven't built anything. We can just go right here. All this here is carbon dioxide and all this carbon dioxide here will settle in the lowest point. So instead of going straight over here, we're going to go a, a little bit lower right here. Because how long this uh, pipe here is or this uh, ladder here doesn't matter in the end. Something like this here. Yeah, that'll do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to come straight over here and then a ladder down there. There we go. That should get the job done for sure this time. There we go. Should be easy to move into a metal a refinery with all the coal around. Yes, it is. Yes, it definitely is. But I thought smooth hatches don't convert metals to refined metal at a rate of one to one, so you rather use the rock crusher. Um, the rock crusher takes a hundred kilograms and gives us fifty kilograms. And when we take a look at our hatches right here, um, it's gonna come in here smooth. They take 100 kilograms and give us 75 kilograms. So they are actually 50% more efficient than the rock crusher. They are not one to one. Definitely not one to one. But uh, they are one to uh, three quarters, I guess. Which is still better, to, uh, still better than one to one and a half. A life engineer. What a treat. <laughs> Dog, no. Thank you very much for joining. Truly appreciate it. How are you doing today? Jay got it 100% correct. Rock Rusher 50%, Smooth Hedge 75%, Metal Refinery 100%. I hardly ever use the Rock Rusher for refining. I go straight to a Metal Refinery using uh, PO2, which is polluted water, of course. Um, yes, that is definitely a method. That is a good idea. Just right at the moment, we only have the Rock Rusher available to us. We do have the Metal Refinery. We could build one. But, you know, usually we are not in this cold of an environment. So we usually don't have that option that quickly without tearing something up badly. <laughs> because the heat that's coming out of this thing is immense. Alright, dupes. Uh, smooth Hedge also doesn't require power, doesn't produce hardly any waste, heat, etc., etc. Very efficient in those regards compared to the other options. 100% correct. I'm a big fan of Smooth Hatches. Yes, it costs me, again, 25% waste in my materials. But other than that, it's set it and forget it as long as your rancher doesn't die a horrible accidental death. Which, of course, is always an option. <laughs> All right. Now, this is almost done. Let's take a look at cooling this year. Of course. Eventually... Oh, yeah, by the way, we, how are we looking over here? Oh, we have our vacuum now. Before we go into uh, this side right here with piping and so on, let's make sure all this here is a wonderful vacuum. There is no sign that there is anything left. So now we can actually go ahead and shut this here. And as soon as it's locked, something like this. We can tear out this manual airlock right here. This here is still sealed 100%. And then go ahead and plop a one right there. Let's do it with a number 9 priority. There we go. Something like this here should get the job done. Another dupe should come by, tear out the manual airlock, put in an insulated tile, and we have a wonderful vacuum in here and no building left over. That is what I should have done in the beginning. But in this case here, well, thankfully I didn't, because if I would have done it, we wouldn't have those extra 1.6 cycles left anymore because obviously it took a hell of a lot longer to pump all of this here out than com uh, compared to just pumping this here out. So actually making a mistake was a good thing in this case here. <laughs> Every once in a while life throws you a bone I guess. I used the ice biomes early game to produce 1,200 kilograms of steel to get a cooling room and use the rest of the biome to cool water and air from the spawn. That is a very good use, like if you play on a normal map that doesn't necessarily look like this here, you can just find yourself a cold biome that has a bunch of ice in it, something like this here just in bigger, 
and then you just throw your metal refinery in there, uh, make your steel, and then go from there. That is definitely very good advice that I can 100% support. And now insulated tile, we can see it, we still have a vacuum in here, no problem at all. And now we just say deconstruct everything with a, let's say, 6 priority, it doesn't really matter, it's not like we're in a hurry or anything. And tear all of this stuff here out, and of course also this one pipe. Don't need any of it anymore up here, all of it can go. And now this room here is officially completed. We have our power in there, and we have our piping on the top that we will use later. And right here we also have our liquid pump, made out of gold, highly important, because once again the cool steam vent right here is erupting at 110 degrees. The water in here will condense and it should come down at probably roughly around 95 degrees, which a normal liquid pump made out of copper, for example, uh, for example will not survive. Therefore, it is highly important uh, the material out of which you make it. Why are you guys not doing a damn thing up here on the top? Please get this done. Thank you. Appreciate it. There we go. And now, right here, we were just talking about piping, right? So in F6, let's take a look. Uh, radiant liquid pipes. We have now 3,445 kilograms, which is more than enough for our purposes. The question is just how are we building it? Uh, because we have, well, of course, our water over here, which is at a, a nice 18 degrees roughly. Over here, of course, we will have the water that will be at roughly 95 degrees. So uh, we have both of those available to us. If we use the 95 degree water, then well, of course, our oxygen and our hydrogen will also be 95 degrees. Um, yeah, which means cooling it with the water that's coming in is not an option. Um, if we use this water here, on the other hand, it will come out at 70 degrees, because when we take a look at the electrolyzer right here, um, it should tell us here oxygen uh, produces 888 grams per second. It will be at least 70 degrees Celsius or hotter if the input materials are hotter. Input material, once again, is of course water. And our water over here at 18 degrees will convert it to 70 degrees over here. Ah. Now, if we go into plumbing and we will grab the radiant liquid pipe, we can come along here and build something crazy like this here. Because the water will actually cool down the oxygen that is going to be all in this area right here. Up here on the top, we're going to have hydrogen. No, we don't care the, about the temperature of the hydrogen whatsoever. Therefore, this here is what we are going to do. Um, obviously, there are other ways to cool it. But I'm just showing it off because this here will work anywhere where you have a somewhat decently temper, uh, temperate water. And that is exactly how we're going to build it for, for right now. Of course, we will cool our oxygen a little bit differently right here. I already have a couple of ideas. But yeah, this here is the first thing that we need. In F7 though, we also need some piping. Some gas pipes and preferably insulated gas pipes to start with. We are going to come right here to do something like this here. There we go. Same thing here, of course. And oh, one more time right there. And then here, um, we will have to come out first. So we're going to build it to right there. Um, but in reality, later on, we will probably bring it all the way across here and into there. So we are going to build both ways. Um, this one here is just for priming it. We need to make sure that there's literally nothing else but hydrogen. And then we are going to connect it to our infinite storage in that particular order once again. All right. Looking good. And the dupes have once again more than enough to do. Also, beer, your tutorials help me in a great way to understand the more advanced thing of the game. Love the content. Keep it up. Remco, thank you very much. I truly, truly appreciate that. Uh, did I... Put two insulated tiles in here. That was... When did I do that? Uh, that was a little bit premature. Of course, we need to be able to get into here yet. Come on, guys. Um, greetings from Australia. Australia! That is also a country we haven't had yet on the list, to the best of uh, my knowledge. Todd, greetings back here from uh, the United States East Coast. Uh, better stop them from building that wall trap. The chase and I just read that in the corner of my eye and I was like, uh, trapped. And then I saw this here. And I'm like, um, that must have been an accident on my end. Maybe a dumb question. If I were to build an infinite liquid tank with airflow tiles inside and the infinite gas tank full of chlorine gas, would it disinfect it? Wait, let me read that again. If I were to build an infinite liquid tank 
with airflow tiles inside an infinite gas tank full of chlorine gas, would it disinfect it? No, it wouldn't. Uh, it would have to go through pipes to disinfect it. Since the gas comes out at 70 C and only hotter if the water is over 70, uh, 70 C, I have no idea why anyone doesn't do this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. How did you discover oxygen not included? That is a good question that I don't have an answer to. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is as uh, stupid as I was... Uh, scrolling th uh, through the steam pages uh, several years ago and it just uh, caught my eye and i just started playing it uh yeah i think that's the best explanation i have there was no nothing there was no article no friend no youtuber that actually that i saw or anything um yeah i i, I don't know i'm pretty sure i just found it on steam thought hey that looks interesting started playing it and played it ever since Saw it on 60% off. That is, of course, best case scenario if you get a deal like that. I couldn't tell you what I paid for it back in the day. I don't think there was anything special going on. I'm pretty sure I just paid for it. <laughs> Whatever they, they asked and uh, called it a day. I discovered it by playing Factorio and it popped up on Oxygen Not Included because I was interested in Factorio. If you believe it or not, I have never really actually played um, Factorio. So many people have recommended it to me, but I have never actually played it. I have seen a couple of YouTube videos about it, like, um, you know, uh, like a world record I have watched for like an hour and 22 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And I understood about 5% of what was going on. It was still cool to see. Um, I do like those kind of speedrunning videos um, about all sorts of games, even though I've never played them. But I've never actually played it. I like the art style of Cly games, uh, like Eats and Don't Starve. Yes, uh, the art style definitely something that caught my eye when I looked through Steam. There's no question. That is something uh, that Cly has a uh, very unique and very nicely done. We have a hatch running around here. How are our hatch wrenches actually looking? Six out of eight, seven out of eight. No eggs in here. No eggs in there. Let's uh, wrangle that thing. Come here. There we go. Go to your buddies where you belong. All right, we have one stone hatchling right here and two stone hatch eggs uh, at 31% and 76%. So this one here is almost through, respectively. And the stone hatchling right here is age three and it will mature at age five. Uh, so we're going to have a full blown stone hatch very soon. And is my water too cold? Oh, yeah. Didn't I turn this thing here off? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was something I just remembered now. There we go. We do need our liquid tepetizer to actually does do some work here. That would be nice. Uh, our water here is getting slowly but steadily colder and colder. And our mealwood right here is not too happy about it. But we will remedy that problem right away. We need to anyway so we can melt more water faster from this ice that we have in our storage bins down here. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, looking good. Now, next thing on the list is, of course, we will need some power. And for the power over here, I'm just going to go ahead in F2 and grab me the heavy watt wire that we already have here anyway. And I'm just going to come around the floor here, something like this. And then at the end, we are going to build us two large power transformers. And yes, we will need two large ones because this here is for the SPOM, which again, SPOM actually stands for self-powered oxygen machine. Clearly, this here is not self-powered. It's just an oxygen machine, a full Rodriguez to be very precise. Um, but we also need it for our infinite storage right here. And eventually, we will build another one down here. And what the hell is going on here? Why didn't you find the bathroom, sir? Oh, come on now. Ah, well, thankfully it's down here. Let's see if there's a problem with our system in any way, shape or form that we need to solve. No. No, there's not. There is absolutely no issue. You have bathrooms available. You just chose not to go to the bathroom, Mason. Uh, not entirely sure why. Oh, I do know why. You didn't build yourself a damn ladder and you're actually all stuck over here. Oh, you damn dupes. Oh, you damn dupes. Oh, yeah. That's fine, though. 
you duck this here out without building the two pieces of leather. Or this piece here. Oh my god. Thankfully, again, doesn't matter too much. That's not the only passing break. Can't go through here. We know that. Can go up here. Can go along here. Can go through there. Can go along here. Can go through there. Can go through here. Can go through there. Where's the other one? You gotta find the other one or they'll still be stuck. Um. No, there's not another one. Oh, there's a way around the path break. Not entirely sure what you were referring to, but I think we have it. Now I know why they slept on the ground. I didn't pay attention to it because I was talking to you guys too much. <laughs> but we have our polluted water right here. We're just gonna get this crap here cleaned up real quick. Not a big deal. Thankfully they peed over here. Thankfully I got him stuck here and not there. Uh, that would have sucked a little bit more. But over here we have our polluted water currently with 2.2 million germs in it. Um, yeah, that's fine. Not that big of a deal. Where you build two pipes, there is no way across from the main ladder to the upper level. But the lower level connects. Yes, right here and right there is probably where you meant, right? Oh well. Again, not the end of the world. These things definitely happen in oxygen not included. There is no question about it at all. The main ladder. Oh, right, no. Right here I can come through. Only here I couldn't earlier, but here I can. And right here I can, and right here I can. Now oh, this should be all good. Should be all good. Closer to the center of the base. I don't see it. There should be too many, so many ways around here uh, that it shouldn't matter at all if there is one pass that is actually not movable. Uh, the only thing that I don't understand is why they're not coming down here. Too low priority. Okay, that's fine. That is okay. That we can live with. Do we have not enough beds? One dupe slept on the ground. Oh yeah, Croc set it up there. <laughs> I was wrong, I didn't see the pole. Okay, there we go. Well, either way though, appreciate it, Jay. Gunnar, good morning everyone, just woke up here. Um, well, Gunnar, welcome to the stream. I hope uh, a little bit of oxygen included, oxygen not included, makes your morning a little bit better. And our F1 overview right here. Still looking good. Again. We have only two oxygen diffusers and 16 dupes. And we are still somehow barely making it. Of course, it is getting worse and worse slowly, but steadily we can see it right here. Um, the oxygen is getting less and less breathable over time. But in general, it doesn't look too shabby. Also right here. Are we actually blocked right here? Who is suffocating? Oh my god. Dear guard. How about you uh, free yourself... Something like this here, please. And then get the hell out of there. There you go. Oh, you dupes. Come on, run faster. Stop complaining. Typical dupe behavior. There are a few things. No matter how hard you look when you build something, you will always find a way to get a dupe stuck. Classic dupes, indeed. Alright. The last few pipes are coming in, of course. Uh, the pipes alone are not everything we need. There's one more thing, and that is, of course, conductive wires. We still have 1.45 tons, which should be okay. So, let's see. What are we plopping together here? And that is actually how I will control my... Um, um, right here, my gas pumps. Uh, I'm just going to snip off the wire. It's that simple. Um... Again, let's grab us the conductive wire. And yes, we have to build this here directly with conductive wires for obvious reasons. We have 240 watts per um, pump right here. So we need a lot of power to keep this system running. Let's see. Right here we can come over and up. And then we can come into here and here. We can plop in three of those. 
Um, let's go further up two of those. And let's see. Um, yeah, let's plop these two in here as well. That should be fine. There we go. Should be just fine. In power, once again, we will need to conduct wire bridge. There we go. Let's plop it around in this way around here. And yeah, as always, we are not going to let the dupes get away this easily. We will make sure they're constantly working on something in this area right here until we are 100% done. There we go. Now our nice uh, connection tunnel here is also done. The dupes are not too happy about it, obviously, because our, let's take a look here, decor overlay is slightly red, mainly due to the heavy watt wire. But they'll be fine. The highest stress that we currently have is at 10%, and we have 14,000 or 13,500 calories. Uh, more and more of our plants here are slowly but steadily hopefully coming back to life. Where's our temperature at in our liquid tank? 16 degrees. Uh, we need a, a little bit more of that in F3. Yeah, of course, right here. Looks like, yeah, okay, this here just exploded out. That's why the water in this area is so cold. Um, there were six tons of ice in here, and that ice is just molten, which gives us a water that is introduced in here six tons worth of roughly four degree cold water which of course intermingles with the rest of the water and lowers our temperature drastically. Um, starvation once again. Cassiopeia is just sitting there doing nothing. That's okay though. Uh, I had a dumb adventure this morning uh, with my current colony and the much more challenging rules for private bedrooms now. I forget when that change happens. I do think I've done it since that change, but I was still remembering the old bedroom rules, even though I did remember the luxury barracks addition. That's the same thing that happened to me the other day, you remember? Um, this is actually still the uh, old layout. Um, let's see, we have a total of 10 tiles right here, 9 tiles right here. Um, when I build one division here in the middle, that only leaves us 4 in 4. So that's actually not going to work and eventually we will have to do something about that if we want to have luxury bedrooms. Which I probably will just uh, completely skip here, because screw it. It's not really worth it. When did you decide to make tutorial stream oxygen not included? Well, I decided to make a YouTube channel in, what was that, September of uh, 21? Yes, September of 21. I started out with some smaller games, uh, because at that time I just thought, you know what, screw it, I'm bored, let's make a YouTube channel. And I, um, I had no idea how to edit, so I literally just recorded stuff in OBS and uploaded it. You can still find the stuff on my channel if you go all the way back in time. Uh, completely unedited, me having no idea what I'm doing, the sound completely screwed up. Um, not a single cut in the entire video, none of that. <laughs> Uh, then I slowly but steadily got into editing. I got me Premiere Pro, learned how Premiere Pro works, um, started to make my videos a little bit better. And then eventually I was like, you know what? A game that I really love is Oxygen Not Included. So let's try that out as well. And I started out with a um, Let's Play. Then eventually I decided to make uh, tutorials because, at least at the time, I knew quite a lot about the game, at least I thought so and figured why not share that with newer players uh, since there is no tutorial in the game people have to go somewhere and i figured youtube is probably about as good as places i need to learn something right so that's how i ended up with tutorials and let's plays for oxygen not included so what do you think of the fertilizer oh my god thanks for the reminder how much do we have left of this stuff 1,675 kilograms. I think it's really good. I'm pretty sure it kept us alive here lately, um, since all these here are growing at 50% higher speed, but I want to get rid of this here actually rather sooner than later if I can. Um, just because I don't want to waste it on the bristle blossoms right now. But first we need to stabilize our food supply here a little bit. Uh, the contents of the water are 18.7 degrees, so these here should come back to life hopefully rather sooner than later. Um, if not, we need to plop in a, f a few... Um, 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 what are they called? Damn it. Radiant liquid pipes, of course. Kind of like we did here. That clearly works. Everywhere we have radiant liquid pipes. No problems whatsoever. Uh, just every other tile to save a little bit on resources. Uh, may have to do that all across here to solve our food problems a um, little bit longer. Probably gonna do that right away. One here, one there, one here. All the way along here. 
and we're gonna do the same thing here. There we go. And right here we're gonna do the same thing. And we are just ran out of copper. Well, that's fine. Having a few in here is definitely better than nothing. And all of these here should come back to life then, giving us more and more. Um, what is your opinion on the dehydrator and rehydrator building? Uh, those were not there if I am not completely lying when I played the game last time, so I couldn't tell you I haven't used them. <laughs> No, the 24 tiles minimum size, he's talking about the bedrooms, of course. Uh, also, I did run into the back wall tile issue, even though I was always planning to include them. Yes, that's another thing. When we take a look into the room overlay right here, um, private bedrooms has back wall tiles. You need to have back wall tiles only for the private one, not for the luxury ones. And luxury ones, yeah, that is something that we will be able to do most likely eventually. But the private bedrooms right here, and I mean, the difference is only one morale between each other. So it's really not that big a deal. Uh, to be fair, I like that there is no cuts in videos. Yes and no. It, I guess it depends on what style you like, right? Um, like, obviously, if you watch my VODs, there's no cuts. It's completely uncut. But then you also have situations where I'm just talking to you guys in chat and there's really nothing happening on the screen, right? Um, I am obviously having the game running i'm obviously looking at something but i'm not building something i'm not actively doing anything other than answering your guys's questions right um can be a good thing can be a bad thing obviously if you're here live it's a hell of a lot of a different experience as if you would were to watch the vault so i do see the appeal in edited videos as well because there you have a 20 or 30 minute video where there's constant action there's constant building there's constantly something going on and obviously, all those building phases here in between, uh, like if you watch one of my edited videos, would be cut out. I'll tell you, I put in all those pumps here and the electrolyzer cut. The next thing you see, we have all the gas pumps and the electrolyzers and we move on to the pipes. Right. Uh, why are there only seven likes with a 68 watching? LOL, hit that like button I just did. Yes, guys, if you have not liked the video yet, this is a great moment. And Krivak is here as well. Uh, once again, reminding you guys to like the video. I would truly appreciate a like. I am actually the one who should remind you guys, and I keep forgetting myself. <laughs> uh, but yes, every single like, it doesn't cost a dime, and it helps me out greatly. The YouTube algorithm. He's a big fan of likes. Not gonna lie about that. Okay, right here. Our power wires are looking good on the right side. Of course, we can see here now we have a potential load of 960 watts. So we can actually include a few more. Um, 960 right here plus another 480 up here on the top. And you know what? Right here we're gonna come up and include this one here as well. That should be fine. Then right here, even though we don't have a uh, heavy watt wire over here yet, I am still going to anticipate one being there in the future. And if there is not, it's not the end of the world either. We're just going to come over here and once again, hook up everything. Need a little bit more copper for those two here on the top. But then we have our power properly hooked up. The like button doesn't update properly. Yeah, like the entirety of YouTube doesn't update properly lately, but... <laughs> I see that it's, uh, Charles, you shouldn't be like that. Always hit like when you first uh, start watching. <laughs> well, I uh, give the guys a little bit of slack here, especially the new people that are watching my stream. They, of course, first have to decide themselves if they actually like what they're seeing, which I truly hope they do. Uh, I know I'm guilty, but thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, what else do we have here? It's 35 likes now. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. No need to take full ownership of reminding people beer. It's what I'm here for. Yes, Krivak, of course. One of my two wonderful moderators. I'm always here to help. And I truly appreciate the both of you. Even though Magenta doesn't have time today to join. But that is, of course, totally fine. Krivak made it. Speed. I like unedited if the player is funny. <laughs> well, I'm not entirely sure how funny I am. But... Um, at least know the game somewhat, if that is helpful. <laughs> uh, 
How did a German end up in the United States? I am Swiss, so I'm interested. Actually, funny, I do actually work for a Swiss company as an engineer. Um, so the world is very small in that one. Um, I uh, obviously came here for work. Um, my company offered me to stay in the United States for two years and uh, get their plant up and running. Um, and after those two years, I decided, how about we just add another, by now, total of 12 years to it. So, yeah, I've been in the United States this year, is in year number 12. And I just ended up here through work and never went back. <laughs> Kiona says, likes only update after the page is refreshed. Blame the electrical engineer. <laughs> That's funny. Privac with the reminder, and if anyone here isn't on the official Discord, get to it. Great friendly community over there. I couldn't agree more. I think we have a really nice community going on on Discord. If you have any questions about Oxygen Not Included, or even Factorio, even though I've never played Factorio on my channel, we do have its dedicated channel on Discord for Factorio, where we have uh, several people that are more than interested in the game and are constantly talking about it. So even games that are not covered on my channel are fair game on the Discord, and there are so many knowledgeable players to help out. And of course, if you are a knowledge knowledgeable player yourself and you like to help other people, the Discord is just the right place for you. And of course, as usual, it doesn't cost a dime. I ran an engineering company in UAE for six years. It was a nightmare. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> Do we have some copper now? Yes. Is it enough copper? Yes. Good. Very good. Okay, now everything here is connected. We're gonna turn all of these here off for right now. Just so when we actually get the water in it, they don't immediately turn on. We don't want that. Uh, but other than that, let's take a another look here real quick. In the F2 overlay, we can see our power. Our power is, of course, coming from our heavy watt wire right here. And it goes up all the way to the top, into our infinite storage on the top. And right here, also for two hours, two electrolyzers on the right. Also, the three pumps on the bottom and the pump in the middle. Uh, potential load, 1680 watts, which means we still have a little bit of capacity left over. And then our second large power transformer right here is currently only connected to three gas pumps. Potential load, 720 watts, but we will also get two more electrolyzers on here, which gives us another 240 on top of that, which makes a total of 960 watts. So not even 50% capacity, but of course, that is not all. There's one more thing that we need to build here. Um, but before we do that, let's check out the F6 overlay. In F6, we can see all of our uh, wonderful radiant liquid pipes right here, which are meant to cool down our oxygen. And they're all built. Everything's fine. And they're built out of copper because currently we don't have aluminum. We do have aluminum ore. We could put it in the crusher, but we're not going to do that just yet. And in F7, we can see the pumps already have a, a little bit of um, power right here. So they already filled the pipes up with carbon dioxide, which is totally fine. But of course, the carbon dioxide right this moment can't go anywhere yet. So that's good. Up here on the top, we have our double split uh, insulated gas pipe right here, which one of them we need to cut off. Once again, we can connect that back without dupe intervention whenever we want. So that's very, very nice. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need. That's literally it. Wonderful. So we can send the dupes in here to do some cleaning up while we are at it. Whew. Yep, building up spawn. There's a lot of things to consider. There's no question. I think of engineers like soldiers. They're automatically good guys. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't ever assume of any kind of group that they're automatically good guys. You will be uh, sorely disappointed, let me tell you. Um, uh, not at all, Charles. Some are really crazy. I speak from experience. So, yep, David definitely knows what I'm talking about since he was leading a engineering company. Um, again, don't take any group of people in any way, shape, or form and just assume they're all good. There are morons and assholes in every group of people. There is no question about it. Yeah, but I like my chances. I can change my mind if proven otherwise. Of course. Of course. 
I'm just saying, don't single one guy out and say, okay, we have three good engineers and that one is an idiot before you actually talk to them. But um, just because an engineer is an engineer or has an engineering degree or an engineering title for that matter, does not make him automatically a good or even a knowledgeable person. That is unfortunately not how that works. Uh, how are you going to put the liquid in the storage room without a tile to hold it? Uh, I don't exactly know what you mean. Oh, you talk about the, um, the water that's coming down there, are you? We'll get to that point. Hold on one second. As a matter of fact, now that everything is built, we can already put in our bottle empty or just anywhere up here on the top. Doesn't matter too much, just like right there. In K, right here. Let's uh, clean all this here up, dupes. I want to see no more debris here. Get rid of it while you can before we close all this stuff here off. And then we will put our water in. All right. Other than that, what is going on down here in the bottom, by the way? Oh, we have carbon dioxide here and our oxalate actually doesn't... Uh, yeah, okay. Let's uh, dig into here. Let's release all this oxygen. We can definitely need it, actually. How are we looking so good right now? Uh, what am I missing? How are we looking better than we did uh, five cycles ago? It should get worse, not better. <laughs> did we release some oxygen somewhere and I didn't pay attention to it? May well be, I guess. Huh. Well, I'm not complaining, I guess. That works. If anybody has an idea of why exactly our oxygen is currently better than it used to be, uh, feel free to let me know. <laughs> the optimist says the glass is half full. The pessimist says the glass is half empty. The, en the engineer says the glass is twice as big as it needs to be. Correct. Very inefficient glass right there. Uh, that is really nice. I've actually never heard that one. <laughs> Doc knows that people are always people, and that is exactly the take I'm trying to take, uh, or the uh, the idea that I try to put out there. Couldn't have said it better. People are always people. I work with a lot of them, and a decent amount can be arrogant. That is another thing you find a lot of people, especially here in the States. Um, to you non-Americans, there are a bunch of like engineering schools over here that think they are better than everybody else. For example, Georgia Tech is one of them. Um, there was literally a guy who just graduated uh, trying to tell a, 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 a co-worker of mine he was the tooling engineer. Um, if he has any questions about O-rings, um, he can just ask him because he took a single class in fluid dynamics. Imagine that. A guy with 38 years experience. Yeah, questionable. Okay, right here. Uh, soon that lovely spawn will pressurize the O2 and push the CO2 down. I love it. Yep, that is the general idea. Um, again, we're not going to run the entire thing because we can't really afford that right now. But eventually we will get there. Uh, I need a drink real quick, guys. My throat is about as dry as it can be. Ah, that's better. That is much, 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 much better. Uh, you had some oxalite that was uh, off-gassing near a pocket of oxygen, but that was this oxalite right here, and it didn't do anything because there were more of uh, two kilograms of uh, CO2 right here, so it actually stopped. Now it should be, slowly but steadily, and if we tear this here out, the oxygen should be able to bleed out and up um, anywhere else where it can get caught, other than inside the spawn. Yes, right here. There we go. Is that reachable? Yep. But other than that, it shouldn't really be able to get caught anywhere and should eventually make its way into our base, which is okay. So, I mean, IT business, we are the good guys, but some are just arrogant and don't like other opinions. Yes. That is another thing that some engineers have uh, definitely against them. Uh, they think everybody else's opinion is just garbage. Um... And that is just not true. I had operators come up to me that make $13 an hour and had an idea that I would have never thought of. Um, everybody's opinion is valid, no matter if it's the janitor or the CEO. That's how I look at it. 
Ah, you dupes. What is so important right now that you're working on that you cannot clean up here? Uh, excuse me, guys. Uh, what are you doing? There's really no other projects other than this little uh, piece of ladder here that's left. Yeah, you're not building nothing. Sometimes. Sometimes I'm just wondering. <laughs> okay, our water in here. Much better. Of course, over here we will always be a little bit hotter than over here. I built the thermal sensor on purpose so far away. Very, very nice. You probably found algae and it boosted the arc oxygenators by a lot. Uh, do you have oxyferns, oxyferns planted too? Nope, there's not a single oxyfern. The only other thing that we have is this one single algae terrarium here um, on top of our two oxygen diffusers. That's it. That's the entire production of oxygen that we have in this space. Until the spawn is on, at least. Um... Oh, there's that lonely bed. Yes, that lonely bed is actually for the one dupe that needs light. <laughs> uh, there's this presumption that engineers, IT and doctors, nurses, uh, that they are smart. They can be, of course. And because of this, it's like some of them feel they are licensed to arrogance. Yeah, I guess that's one way to look at it. Um, in F2, though. Why exactly do we not have power? Oh, of course. This here is missing. Oh well, more oxygen in the base is a good problem to have. Yes. It is a very good problem to have. I still would like to know how exactly though. <laughs> Maybe I can replicate it somehow. Uh, right here we have a little bit more um, algae. So we're coming down. Yeah, we just gotta pick this here up tile by tile, which is fine. We're just gonna get a uh, dupe stuck right here. Got my troops working on a 1,000 plus tile dig area and I hope no one dies while I'm watching. Oh god. Oh god, they're already dead. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> Maybe place a few containers closer. Um, containers for what? You mean the storage bins further over here? Or do you mean another storage bin for um, algae over here? Not entirely sure. Oh, you mean storage bins for here. Well... Um, they are taking it actually straight up here to our infinite storage. Which, of course, is a little bit of a long way, I know. But at the moment, it's all we got. And I don't want to start putting bins randomly all over the place. Especially since we have... I would have done that if our oxygen looked the way I expected it to look, but we are way better off than I expected, so... No need. No need. Uh, at IC Venom, yeah, exactly, but sometimes it's good to be outside the bubble to understand the problem better or get better ideas. Couldn't agree more. Literally could not agree more. And then, of course, um, we have Croc for cleaning Erin. Yep. Exactly. Very, very good. I'm just going to turn up the speed at this point. Over here, we can see we have our water, and it's actually sitting at 91 degrees. In NF3, we can see that we are slowly but steadily transferring that heat into our insulated tiles. Which will take a very long time until the insulated tiles have the same temperature as our water. Therefore, as I said, this here should be good for 100 cycles, if not longer. Um, but eventually, we will have to do something about it with our radiant liquid pipe. And even then, we can't just come in here and rebuild our insulated tile, which will reset its temperature value. So, is this here officially a timer? Not really, because it will break eventually. Not break, but it will overheat all everything around it eventually. But at the moment, that's totally fine. Alright, looks like another storage bin here just exploded out. Very nice. Our water is actually going up very nicely. And also our bristle blossoms over here. Slowly but steadily, we are making our way all the way to the back here. I'm wondering, will we have all of these here full by cycle 100? We are about to start cycle 94. And our mealwood is also coming in very nicely. Good. Very, very good. Everything is working exactly as expected. So far, so nice. 
We have another printing pod ready, I'm just noticing. And we have nutrient bars. Again, we don't need another dupe right now. We currently have 16. Probably not bringing on another dupe today. Um, eventually, I want to get to around 20. But at the moment, 16 is just good enough, especially as long as we still have food problems right here. All right, come on, dupes. Clean up. That is your one and only priority right now. Is it possible to go on planet overview to see what geysers you have? Oh, of course it is. Uh, in the star map, we can just click on our planet here that's called Coldiel. Uh, very fitting, I guess. You have an iron volcano, a cool slush geyser, natural gas geyser, a uh, mana volcano, cool steam vent, infectious polluted oxygen vent, hydrogen vent, carbon dioxide geyser, salt water geyser, a volcano, an oil reservoir, and four unknown ones. So that is what we have. We are also metal rich. And a bunch of biomes, of course, radioactive, forest, rust, ocean, space, oily, magma, tundra, jungle, marsh, and sandstone. That is what we currently have. And something else that we didn't have before was copper, uh, ice, and slimy meteors. I also have not dealt with those since I played the base game a long, long, long time ago. So we will have to do. Um, yeah. Can you show the temperature overlay? Oh, of course, sure can. We are playing on Rhyme, so everything around us is freezing cold. And in our base here, the only thing that's currently providing heat is the oxygen diffuser, as well as our pipe. But our pipe is insulated everywhere, except where we actually want some heat, which is our plants. So once again, here is our current temperature overlay. Farther out? Sure. How is that? Everything's in the same shade of blue. <laughs> what guys as you don't have? That is the better question. <laughs> David says, wow, all this was was here begeared. Yes, everything the heart could possibly want he is 100% correct. Did you update the game? Check out the new credit drop off. New credit drop off is right here. Uh, the old ones are still here. Because they are now deprecated, but they're apparently still working as intended. So we're going to leave them. Um, but the new ones are right here on the top in our third wrench. Only four unknown. Guess you're, <laughs> you're, guess you're uh, uh, farther through the map than I thought. Uh, well, the map is... It's, um, well, we haven't found neutronium yet, left or right, and we haven't really dug down. I mean, here's our printing pod, and we made it only this far down yet. So, yeah. Oh, look at this here. There we go. That's a hell of a lot better. Now, two more pieces here to pick up. This here can already be closed off very nicely. No problem at all. And then, as soon as this here is off, we can already create a vacuum in here. As soon as we have a vacuum, uh, this here should be ready to roll. Come on, dupes. Get it done. While we're waiting for this, by the way, how about we look at our next blueprint? So, what do we have? Drum roll. We have a mush green micro musher that is nifty. Edible colloids for dinner again. Yes. Didn't even know that thing can have its own uh, blueprint, but sure. Let's change it. This is also new in the update if you just joined. You can now switch between the blueprints back and forth like, like that. You don't have to tear it down, which is very, very nice, quite honestly, uh, because it's the only way that I will ever use blueprints. There's no way in hell that I'm going to tear something down just to make it look different. <laughs> and it has the exact same functionality. So now that I can just switch back and forth with the click of a button, I am much, much, much more inclined to actually use it. Uh, unknown will be some crappy CO2 geyser and a hot polluted air at 500 degrees. <laughs> yes, that is usually the kind of stuff that this game throws at you. Okay, now this here is completely closed off. We can grab us gas vents, plop them all around here. Not exactly like this though. And then turn on our gas pumps to pump out and make this here a wonderful um, um, vacuum. That's the word I'm looking for. There we go. Good grief. If I already forget the word for vacuum. We are really screwed, guys. 
First one is on, and of course, we are just going to let our gas pumps here crank. The more the merrier, that's totally fine. What's our atmosphere sensor set to below a thousand? That's totally fine. They will turn off automatically the very moment that we are a vacuum. And we have 70 concurrent viewers. Uh, that is a new record for me. Thank you all for joining. I truly appreciate it. And we are about to fire up the spawn here very, very shortly. All right. Very good. So. There's our vacuum. A bit seven pumps that should be in absolutely no time, you would think. Let's watch this here. Two thousand micrograms, fifteen hundred, a thousand. It goes really quickly with seven pumps, <laughs> especially at five times speed. Two hundred micrograms, and we should have here a vacuum in absolutely no time. Krivak and frozen hair with the cheer sign <laughs> or the cheers remote. Love it. And Doc No with four dollars as a super chat. Thank you very, very much for the support. I truly, truly appreciate that. Yes, our gas pumps are now all off. We can see it. Pump not in gas. We have, well, no pump. Uh, I see obsidian inside. Uh, oh. Are you going to let the abyssalite by the hydrogen pump annoy you? Good God. I didn't see it. Gotta be kidding me. It's okay, though. Again, we're not here doing a beauty prize. <laughs> I see obsidian inside. Obsidian. Did you probably mean this abyssalite right here, right, Croc? Yeah, probably so. Um, okay, so right here. We have now our bot lamp here. We have our gas pumps right here. And you were asking about the tile to actually catch the liquid. Yes, that will be built right here where our gas went this. So I'm actually going to move it one over. Should have done that right away. But I just wanted to create a wonderful um, um, vacuum first. Uh, that will solve our problem because we will need this here again. Um, as soon as we prime our system, we will once again need our outlet right here. Uh, no outlet, no priming. There we go. And now one piece of insulated tile right there. Just as simple as that, as usual. And we're going to build this here with a nine. That's already done. We can already say enable auto bottle number nine liquid. And we are just going to use standard bottle water. Because our temperature in here should never be higher than 100 degrees, therefore it's not going to be a problem. And yeah. Of course, Croc is now coming because Watt decided in the middle of his building right here uh, to run away. Good job. Uh, yeah, as usual. What else do you expect? Disable the building. Ah, uh, we can't do that. Disable the water. Enable the building again. <laughs> I did what? Uh, you were in the middle of building this insulated tile right here and then just decided to run away. Come on, Jay. Now we can. There we go. So, uh, let's check this out again. Sin, he clearly just wanted to go for the pitcher pump and then in the middle of walking down decided to... Oh, no, not today. Not with me. But Iris is here to get the job done once and for all. Alrighty. We're putting water in. And that's already more than enough, I would argue. Let's see what we got here. We have oh, way too much, way, way too much. So let's grab us a dupe and let's start mopping right over here in this corner. I'm going to turn down the speed for that. How humiliating. <laughs> I'm thinking about buying this game yet to decide. I mean, obviously, if you bought my opinion, I highly, highly recommend it. But of course, it is um, up to everybody themselves. The learning curve is somewhat high i'm not gonna lie I lie about that either but thankfully by now nowadays there are more than enough tutorials on youtube that, that will help you out including of course my own so let's take another look here before we close this here off like i said earlier i'm prone to forgetting stuff and this here is one of those things that we will need um otherwise we can't reach it anymore later um, in F2, we have power. In F6, we need nothing. And in F7, we have all of our piping going on. So, well, actually, first the pipes. Uh, then we have our uh, two wall pieces right here. And in that particular order, we will build our wonderful 
wonderful infinite storage. Uh, how much water per tile should be in the infinite storage? Well, let's take a look here. We have our gas vent, and it says it overpressures at 2,000 gram, uh, 2,000 grams. I mean, um, usually you don't want to go below 300 grams per tile, and you really don't want to go above 1,500 grams per tile, in my opinion. Um, if you go below 300, you run into the chance that it will just uh, disappear into thin air and uh, will be deleted out of existence. Therefore, yeah. That should be good. Automation. Good call. What I usually like to do is put an automation wire just anywhere. Um, let's see. How about the other side of the ladder? Right here. And just a signal switch. So I can turn these pumps here on and off at will. Uh, always a good thing. I always have either both running or none. Because two gas pumps right here. We can see it. Gas 500 grams per second. And then when we take a look into our ventilation overview. We can see in here. We can't. Okay, how about if you, if you click on it? Shouldn't it tell me somewhere that it can hold one kilogram per second? Maybe in here? It actually doesn't tell us that anywhere. Well, I guess you will have to take my word for it. A gas pipe can hold a one kilogram per tile. So, <laughs> you need two gas pumps to actually fill it up at 100%. It's that simple. I actually wasn't aware that it doesn't tell you that anywhere. That's weird, but okay. I guess we'll just roll with it. All right, final touches. And you always need more than one vent. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. You're one hundred percent right, Croc. Um, I didn't mention that because I always build it like this here with four gas vents right beside each other. And the only reason for four is, well, we have two gas pumps which take up four tiles of space, might as well put in four gas vents. Theoretically, you would get away with less than that. You could only build two or so, but that is just the standard setup for my infinite storage for any kind of gas. Okay, now we can close it off. We have about one kilogram per tile, uh, give or take. Uh, we may get a little bit more because as soon as we build this here, it will shove that water over to the right and then we are good to go. The bottle emptier is a goner. Don't need it anymore. And then, of course, before we can get anything in there, we once again will need a gas vent right here as well. Uh, so we can create a wonderful vacuum in here. That is, of course, always something we need. And uh, can't be understated the importance of having a vacuum before we do anything else. Now, though, before we finish this syrup, one more thing. I also want to build some kind of infinite storage for oxygen because we can clearly see right here we have six gas pumps right here six gas pumps give us a total of three kilograms per second right here we are producing 888 grams per second so when this entire thing here is running yeah that is a lot of oxygen much more than we will need for a very very long time so we need to store that stuff somewhere so where is that and how are we going to do it well Let's build us another infinite storage down here on the bottom, just straight below it. And that's where we're going to feed it in. Um, super question, uh, how the dupes going to reach the gas vents in the bottom after you close the wall? Um, these right here, you mean? Well, the only way will be to go back into this electrolyzer right here and actually, well, um, tear one of those electrolyzers out and build a ladder. That's the only way to do it. But this here is specifically for hydrogen. So we're probably not going to have too many hydrogen sources. So we have our spawn right here, which will be our main hydrogen source. And I believe on the star map, didn't we see a hydrogen vent? We have a hydrogen vent, which will most likely be our second source of hydrogen once we find it. I don't even know where it's at. Um, I don't think we have found it yet. It shows it to us. It's not an unknown, but I can't remember it actually... Uh, revealing it with our um, top priority right here. I don't think we have done that anywhere, not that I can remember at least. So these will be our two sources, and when we take a look into our F7 overlay, we have a pipe here, we have a pipe there, and then we have this pipe right here. Therefore, um, we are already utilizing this one, and we can just find our hydrogen vent and come in on this side. So, theoretically, we probably don't even need to do uh, need to come back in here.
I think some streams ago there was the question how it is with the ads. Uh, so as, uh, as so far, I only had a one to two ads in the stream. I think this is a good rate for, uh, for the lowest setting. Yes, we are on the lowest setting. And that's good. Um, I've been online now. Let me check. I don't even know myself. For two hours and you had only two ads. I think that is acceptable for, for... That should be acceptable for everybody. I mean, if you compare it with pay TV here, I think we're doing just fine. <laughs> that's very, very good. Uh, mm, the infinite oxygen storage on the left side. The uh, hydrogen storage on the right side. Well, yes. We could do that, we could just plop it over here, but if we build the exact same one, we only have two gas pumps in there, which means we are coming with six gas pumps in, but we only have two gas pumps available to come back out. And once again, with two gas pumps, we can only pump one kilogram per second, while in our base right here, we have 16 dupes. 16 dupes would need uh, 1.6 kilograms per second, so we need a, a lot more oxygen than that. Um, so I want to build a bigger storage than that. And that bigger storage we are going to put down here on the bottom. Um, that is at least the plan right now. So, where are we going to put it though? Uh, we could just put it right underneath here. There's really not a hell of a lot stopping us, I believe. Your freezing water. This water right here should be okay. Because we have our insulated tiles right here. Uh, we don't have any debris in here. Our gas vents are at 2 degrees. Should be totally fine, I believe. Uh, the water temperature shouldn't change drastically for a while here. And especially very, very soon, we are going to pump hydrogen in there. Therefore, we should be fine. Um, I will consider adding a bridge first to the hydrogen generator tank and then the infinite storage. Um, why? I will consider adding a bridge first to the hydrogen generator tank and then to the infinite storage. That is actually, yeah, we can do that. That is actually smart, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying now. I had to think about it for a second, but you're 100% correct and I missed it. Uh, right here, we can build us a bridge. Um, with this bridge, it would first flow out uh, to the hydrogen generators, which will be over here somewhere. Uh, therefore, the bridge right here should work just fine. And we should be able to build this here, I believe, uh, without a problem. That is actually a very good call, Croc uh, Pro Player. Uh, not entirely sure how I missed it, but you're 100% correct about that. Thank you. Why would you need to make an infinite O2 storage? Would you, uh, you would just burn through all of the water. Um, we have over here a cool steam vent. And we have another one, well, somewhere over here. Let's see, is it you? Yes, this one right here. That's another cool steam vent right there. So, we have two cool steam vents. Um, we have basically an infinite uh, amount of water available. Yeah, that's why. Highly efficient? Yes, that is highly efficient. 100% correct, I missed that. And, again, I'm always somebody who uh, takes a good su suggestion. And I will admit making mistakes, because nobody's perfect. Especially myself, not just including myself. <laughs> so, right here, we're going to build us an infinite storage. And the infinite storage is going to contain a total of four pumps. The nice thing is, we can't just stack them like that. Because how high we put those, it doesn't matter. We can stack them up infinitely if we wanted to. It's an infinite storage. There's going to be so much oxygen in here once we actually use this here uh, that it won't matter anymore. So, there's that. Right here, we're just going to come down. We need a couple more tiles right here, something just like this. We'll get the job done so we can once again contain our water. This side here we close off, this we dig all out, and then gas vents on the bottom. Just four of them. And yeah, that should get the job done. Uh, without infinite storage, the base will overpressure, then mess up the spawn tuning. Uh, not necessarily, because we have the gas vents a bit overpressure at 2,000 grams. So yes, the pressure will be higher than 2,000, most likely. But yeah, it's... Um, it's just a good idea to have one. It doesn't hurt. It's, it's just that simple. It doesn't hurt to have one, so why not build one real quickly? And uh, be ready for any eventuality. In F7, we are going to grab us an insulated gas pipe. We're going to come down with it. Not exactly like this here, guys. There we go. 
And then right here, it's not gonna be 100% optimal like this. I don't know how can we do this here the best way. This one here on the top is simple. Yeah. Not entirely sure. We will have to come out this way, which is not optimal to have the pipe come in here and then in there. But it will get the job done. It'll be fine for our purposes. Uh, spawn should start and stop automatically. Yes, the spawn definitely does. And once again, at the beginning, we're only going to run one or two electrolyzers. The other two are going to be completely idle, and so will be uh, three or four of our pumps right here. Because we just don't have the power or the water um, at this moment to actually run this thing here full blast. And there is also no need for it, right? Very, very nice. How are we doing up here, by the way? Haven't looked here for a while. So here we have now completely filled up with carbon dioxide. Two tiles high. That should be perfect. Because what is going to happen is our chlorine gas up here, it will come down. And because the floor is so cold, it should condense. Therefore, we will have a liquid um, chlorine down here on the bottom. And therefore, only one carbon dioxide left, which should not let any of the natural gas out. So that is the general idea of what I'm trying to build right here. Um, works, of course, perfectly on Rhyme with a negative 42 degrees uh, dirt temperature right there. Um, if that works or not, we will see once the spawn is up and running. Which, how the hell did you get yourself stuck in there, Croc? Gosh darn it. Uh, how do I get you back out of there before you die? Oh, Croc. What are we going to do with you? We're going to deconstruct this tile right here. We're going to cancel this tile right here. We are going to give this one here number 9 priority. And I hope uh, you will get yourself out of this pickle now, sir. You shouldn't be suffocating. There's, of course, one more tile left, which is where this gas pump here is. We gotta cancel that one as well. Ay, ay, ay. Come on. Somebody dig up this tile. Turtle Face says, hey, hey, Turtle Face, how are you doing? Thank you for joining. Appreciate you. All is number nine. Yes, that is correct. I, I am somebody who just gives everything what I'm currently working on a number nine priority and give call it a day because that's what I'm looking at right now. And clearly that's what I want to get done. <laughs> if you have watched any of my videos, then you're most likely aware of uh, that. That is exactly how my playstyle is. <laughs> Can we try this here one more time? The second gas pump goes over here. Build it first, so we have it, because you won't be able to reach it anymore once we go lower, and then we close it back off. It's good, you. <laughs> Breathing is overrated. <laughs> ah, still looking not too shabby. How are our... I still don't understand. It's still absolutely beyond me right now, but... Whatever, I guess. But we are still looking so good. Alright, you guys are good, you guys are good. Watt got himself stuck, but gets himself unstuck. Good job, good job. And I think now all possibilities of getting stuck should be remedied. Oh, you dupes. All right, right here, our water temperature hasn't shifted by even 0.1 degrees. Of course, once again, we are inside of insulated tiles with no debris that could cool it down. So that's good. And then just a few more seconds and we should be good to go here. We will need power, of course, and that is exactly why I said earlier we are only at 50% capacity. We should be able to put those four pumps here on, no problem. They need 240 watts. So that's fine. We can just come with a power cable into here and into there. Just as simple as that. Uh, did you generate some more carbon? Is the space pump still on? No, the space pump is actually off. Yeah, that could be it. That could be it. Yes, the carbon dioxide is slowly but steadily uh, pressurizing itself down here again and pushing all the oxygen up. 
That's probably it, actually. That is most likely what we have here. We have some polluted oxygen trapped up here where I'm not entirely sure where it's coming from. Is it because our deodorizer here can't keep up? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> well, how are we on looking on germs? Yeah, that is our explanation right here. That's where our oxygen's coming from. <laughs> of course, if I just look in the F1 overlay, it all looks like this. But in the F4 overlay, we actually see we have a bunch of polluted oxygen right here. Uh, yeah. That explains a lot. Yeah. Should probably do something about that eventually. But up here, we are still fine inside the base. Everything's totally okay. And right down here, our ration boxes, we also have no germs. So as long as they're just here in the air, they really don't harm us in any way, shape, or form. So we're just gonna outright ignore it. That's the uh, proper course of action here, in my opinion. Can we still reach this here? Probably not, right? Oh, no, you dupes. Come on, guys. We can directly tear this here back out, as a matter of fact, because we will need, once again, in plumbing, our bottle emptier, which should fit right here just fine. There we go. And up here on the top, this insulated tile here can go as well while we're at it. And the wall over here can't be built either. Oh, goodness. Um, this here actually counts still as a piece of our large power transformer, so we need to build the ladder one further over to the right. That should be okay. And then dig all this here up. There we go. That will get it done. I made an oxygen deodorizer room next to the polluted water tank. As a matter of fact, this tank here won't exist for much longer. Um, I have a better mouse trap. Um, yeah, this tank here will go soon, but at the moment we just have different priorities, so we're just gonna leave it be, and as I said earlier, we're just gonna ignore it. Also, this power transformer here, I made the same mistake as I almost made over here on the right. It is uh, not standing on ground, because this here is actually uh, another tile where the power transformer is on. The power transformer is three tiles wide. So we need to do something about that too very soon. But we will get there. We will get there. Come on, guys. Full force, full steam ahead. Whatever you want to call it, just do it. <laughs> Let me guess. Somebody's going to get stuck over here. Let's see. I'm just waiting for it, honestly. Now, maybe we get lucky. No, Chemster. What are you doing? Where are you going? Good guy. Good guy. Come on, get it built. Ah, should have started building this earlier, shouldn't I? That would have been a lot better. Up here, the natural gas geyser. Um, if you have questions about how to tame this thing, um, it's really very simple. The gas comes out at 150 degrees. We will need a little bit of steel for that um, because our normal gas pipe, or let's see here, in ventilation, gas pump, where you at? Right here. Uh, all we have right now is gold. And gold gives us plus 50, 75 is the normal. So if you plop this here in here, it's just a question of time until it will overheat. Uh, so that's not going to fly. We will have to build it out of uh, steel. And steel is something we don't have yet, but everything's ready. Uh, we are ready to go here at a moment's notice. All you have to do is build one extra piece of ladder right here, and we are in. Come a little bit further up, and we are right at it. Even though and it's currently overpressured, it would be really nice to know how much longer this thing here is active. Uh, because an adornment period to go in there would be even better, even though it doesn't matter too much. And slowly but steadily, look at this, we are at 33,000 calories. So our bristle blossoms here are helping us out greatly. And right here, our mealwood. 
Uh, those are probably some pieces. We actually do have some um, radiant liquid pipes right here, so I'm not entirely sure how these here are not up to body temperature right now. Oh, they are 0.1 degrees away. And Kremlin, why are you just sleeping right there? Your bed's literally over here. Unless we have 4, we have 8, we have 12, we have 16, we have 17 beds. So we have only 16 dupes. Yeah, not entirely sure. They're going to be so happy once that spawn is operational. Not only them, me too. <laughs> okay, once again, let's uh, clean up, including this stuff right here while we're at it. Uh, once this here is clean, we can finish the build once and for all, and we are good to go. Of course, we cannot put any water in here yet. That is why cleaning up is so important, not only because we want to retrieve those resources, but also because they're extremely cold. If I try to drop water in here right now, it'll freeze instantly. And that we can't have. So, yeah, there's that. Also, the faster we get the debris out, the better it is, because the gas vents here also are slowly but steadily cooling down more and more. Got polluted water in your tank. How in the hell is there polluted water in my tank? Mop it up. Um, that's why. Son of a... Polluted ice. They put polluted ice in there. And solid carbon dioxide. Don't want any of that. There we go. Let's take care of it this way. And you know what, for right now, let's put a storage bin in here, specifically for polluted ice. That should solve that problem. Good idea, transfer the polluted water to tanks, dismantle and place deodorizers. <laughs> it's beer to you, the German engineer. Love your intro of your videos. Hey, I truly appreciate that. Uh, Definitely good to have an intro that uh, at least sticks in people's minds somewhat. <laughs> Alright guys, get down here, get cleaning, and we are ready to roll. In the meantime, something else we can tell him to do is with this ladder right here. We will get into this polluted water right here. Um, in this polluted ice, while we're at it, we're gonna just come all the way straight down. And with this ladder here is uh, where we are going to come down and down and see where we are going. And, of course, we hope that we can go as straight as possible. That is not always a thing, but we are hopeful and we will see how it goes. Let's get all the way down to this polluted ice right here. Um, because this water here is at negative 7.5 degrees and the polluted ice is at negative 21.8. Let me take a look here. The melting point is negative 20.6. So having this water pour into here should be able to melt this polluted ice right here, which will be helpful in the long run. Love it. It's the best one I have seen yet. No one has come close to you. I truly appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's uh, I really, that makes me really happy, honestly. <laughs> Okay, let's come down here, tear up everything and anything, and just go straight through. Not through the ice, though. The ice we would like to melt, if at all possible. Slowly but steadily, we will get down there. Is that a number 9 priority? Oh, we don't want that. Yeah, it's, it's like a 7 is fine. I still want you to clean up, though. The spawn has priority, guys. The spawn has priority. Do I accidentally have my build? Yes, I have my building on a number 9 priority by default. That was an accident. Usually I don't want to do that. I usually go manually into my priorities right here and set it up. Um, something else that we will need as soon as we have the spawn. Down here it is at the moment nice and cold. Um, where are we going to go with our pipe though? With our pipe we will have to go through an even colder area uh, for as long as possible. Um, so we can also melt some ice while we are at it definitely helpful so we just need a tiny little bit of power which we will soon have in abundance uh, to pump it out and back into our tank but yes we could come with our pipe on this very leftmost one right here all the way down and come through here and then back up that will melt all of this ice here slowly but steadily it's just a question of um where exactly do we put it 
I don't know about you, but I have ads every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes. Well, that's not good. That is uh, by far more. I have it set to the lowest setting that YouTube allows. And somebody just said not that long ago um, that they have ads about... They only had two ads the entire stream. So I don't know what the hell is what the hell YouTube is doing. I'm also not playing any ads manually, just so you're aware. Um, not something I do in any way, shape or form. And just when he's explaining something interesting. Oh god. Uh, I have no ads at all. The basic ad blocker seems to be very effective on YouTube. I'll tie my next one. Yes, it was Kionis who said that. Yes, Kionis. Please do. I'm truly interested. I'm, I'm, I'm truly and genuinely interested. Because I have YouTube Premium, so if I watch a stream myself, or if I watch a video myself, I don't have any ads, obviously. Um, but I want to have um, the ads that are coming, obviously in a way that it is as, at, at the least, disruptive to the viewing experience as possible. Sin is here. Hey Sin, how are you doing? Late to the party today. <laughs> yeah, I have all two hours. Uh, and only when I reload the page. Well, when you reload the page, that makes sense because there are pre-roll ads, so it thinks every time you reload the page that, um, well, you're just joining for the first time. That is uh, expected behavior, actually. I have no ads and no ad block, but I'm wired and watch on TV. This is so crazy that you guys have so different experiences, I'm telling you. Uh, every so often YouTube demonstrates that they can uh, uh, casually bypass ad blockers and then they roll it back. I have theories as to why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm genuinely curious about that. Um, what are your guys' uh, viewing experiences? Because obviously um, it's not like I'm even with the ads that we have, I'm making any, uh, any money off of this. So it's just a matter of... Um, having a good viewing experience. I want you guys to just uh, be here, chill out, and have a good time. <coughs> PlayStation might drop more ads. It may well be that it also has something to do with what you're watching. Who the hell knows? And sin with two dollars as a super chat. Boom, spicy entrance. That is about as spicy as it gets, Sin. <laughs> Thank you very, very, very much. Truly appreciate it. All right, can you please get those last few pieces out of here? Our gas vent is by now at negative 13 degrees, so I'm already worried that the water's gonna freeze right away. But while we are here, and let's put down a uh, another piece of insulated tile right there, so to get this out of the way right away. And then right here, we are going to move our ladder, or better to say, replace it with another tile right here, and then the dupes can just come down here. Will take about a half a second longer every time they do it, but that's fine. Let's turn up the speed once again a little bit. Here we are slowly but steadily digging down. We will also get a little bit more algae. We are back down to where we were at the beginning of the stream, which was just above two tons. So, yes, yeah, so we need to be careful. We need to watch out here. Uh, we definitely don't want to have the same problem again. And there we have it, the polluted water is going uh, downwards. And right here, our uh, polluted ice should slowly but steadily be heated up just by the polluted water. And the polluted water, of course, in turn will uh, get um, uh, cooled down. The question is just what's stronger, the polluted water that we are pumping in or the polluted ice that's all around? I guess we will find out one way or another. And right here, our storage bin is ready as well. Where are liquefiables, polluted ice. Now you have a place where you can store your polluted ice and you don't have to throw it into our main water tank anymore. Good grief. But yeah, looking good. Sin still alive? Yes, Sin is still alive. All dupes have made it so far. Uh, yeah, I'm just as surprised as you are, not gonna lie. <laughs> I think people who use ad blockers are less likely to respond positively to ads under normal circumstances, and even less likely in a context where they're used to uh, the ads being blocked. That does make sense, I guess, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why using an ad blocker, clearly you're not interested in the ads. 
So the likelihood that you actually click on something is uh, extremely low, I would say. Okay. Looks like our debris here has been cleared. There we go. Let's get the last few pieces out and then go from there. YouTube is owned by Google and these sorts of apps that will defeat anti-ad block measures may actually reduce the amount of useful info they can extract from consumers and use to target the other sites. Huh. Would be interesting to see you place a chunk of ice, the exact amount needed, and see if the hot air will melt it in time. We could try something like that. Polluted water is getting colder, we can see it, but also the polluted ice is getting warmer. Of course, we are uh, digging up a few tiles here, but it's not too many of them, so it's not that big of a deal. Very, very good. Come on, guys. Pick up those last few pieces here. And now we have it. All right. Back down to normal speed. Our bottle emptier. Liquid, water, number nine priority, and a water bottle. Let's go. Also, this here. Please build it. I just get YouTube Premium and it counts as though I watched every ad. Uh, that way the content creator uh, content creator gets their due. Yes, that is very true. Um, there is a, a little bit of revenue from um, um, YouTube Premium. But it's nowhere near as much. Or there are just not as many people using YouTube Premium as with normal ads. But again, it's negligible anyway. <laughs> Okay, we got the um, insulated tile built. Now the bottle emptier just needs to bring us some water. Who's on the job? Anyone? No one? Somebody please bring me a bottle of water down here. Of course, our pumps turn on. There we go. That should do it. Let's turn it off. Let's see how much water did we get in here. Uh, just about as much as before. So that's really good. Let's start mopping down here. And then stop at the appropriate moment and close it off. Just as simple as that. Very good. We shouldn't need this anymore, but I'm going to wait a little bit because every once in a while I can't time it properly and I get a little bit too much water out, but should be good enough. Here comes Croc himself. And I thought he's gonna come mopping, but no, he just picks up those 14 kilograms of water, of course. But Jay is here. Jay is mopping. Let's let him mop longer and longer. Let's see here. A little bit longer. Perfect. Let's cancel it. And then let's see how much water we're left with. About a kilogram or so per tile would be golden. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. Yeah, we're gonna roll with this here. No problem, that should get the job done. Close it off. All of the day. We are good. Very nice. Oh crap, one more thing. <laughs> How often do I say that, that I'm very forgetful about it? We will not be able to enter here anymore. Therefore, this year needs to be done. Um, with this year, let's say buildings. Let's wait another few seconds. Give it once again a number 9 priority down here on the bottom specifically. And there we go. Well, amount of ads watch helps with reach because the company wants to make money too. Probably. I would assume that it probably helps you the more people watch an ad. I'm sure that YouTube would you reward you for that, I would assume. But I have really no idea. Again, the ad revenue is really negligible, especially on live streams. I would need to have not 70 viewers, but probably 7,000 to make anything uh, meaningful here. <laughs> Automation! There's Jason again coming in clutch appreciate that yes of course we need automation um let's see automation wire well crap we can't reach the top anymore can we now uh yeah that's fine though we're just gonna come over here we're just gonna come over there uh we're gonna put in uh, two signals which is here and there 
and on the top right here instead of building this here which is still on a five priority so it won't get done anyway anytime soon uh, this one here should be able to reach this and this so we will need to tear out this one tile right here uh, to get the same result in buildings number nine priority get it done I most often use crude oil or petroleum. I precisely measure the quantity by emptying one pipe, then I empty the bottle. Yeah. That's one way to do it for sure. I usually just do it like this. You know. Your way is definitely smarter though, not gonna lie. <laughs> Come on. Build the last few pipes. And now my water has disappeared because we're building over it and now it is frozen waited just a notch too long is the water freezing yes it is because right here we have the uh, piece of debris which froze it all it's okay though thankfully we still have our tile right here so we're going to repeat the exercise one more time and we will be good that was my mistake for not building those pipes here right when i should have so yeah there's that Get rid of it and mop it while you're at it. This time we want to build everything that we need first, maybe. And then we will get it done for good. I've run into uh, many bad situations for getting the automation with infinite storages. It's burned in my mind now. Well, thankfully we have the pliers here, which are basically more or less its own kind of automation. Just not quite as visible, I guess. But yeah, uh, it's definitely better to have real automation. Wait, where exactly did this water here now come from? Did it melt again? How did it melt again? Um, I am slightly flabbergasted right now. What exactly melted the water now? Very odd. Only after construction at the water. Very odd. Well, I'll take it. But it's still a little bit too, well, little for my taste. We are at 500 grams. It should be good. We are over 300. But I usually aim for roughly the 1 kilogram, 1.2 kilogram per tile. But if we shove the other 500 grams over here. You know what? We're going to try it. Screw it. Screw it outright. We're going to try it as it is, and we will see what happens. Howdy! Just turned in anything cool I missed? Hey, Iris. Uh, maybe this little uh, spawn right here. Other than that, you're good. You're, you're just fine. <laughs> uh, just added a, a little full Rodriguez to our base. But yeah, nothing to lose. It's just oxygen. <laughs> well... Let's see. When we build the bottom tile, how much will we have? That's the big question here. Come on. Turn up the speed. Full force. Ten times. Let's go. There we go. We have 690, 660, 620, and 640. That should do. We're gonna we're gonna roll with that. We're gonna roll with that, no problem. Uh, right here, insulated gas pipe F7. We're gonna have a second one of these, and both of those will need a gas vent, of course, so we can pump out all the carbon dioxide that's in here. We need to get rid of it. We need a vacuum, and then we should be good. And the other thing, of course, that we will need then uh, very soon thereafter is we need to connect these pipes to our storage right here, with the exception of one of them. One of them we will not connect right here. One of them we will try to cool out right. Let's take a look at that real quick. Um, down here. That should work. You heard that little beeping noise? We are almost at a cycle 100. That's what that means. So let's see if I build this pipe straight across here and into right there. We could just come across here. I could just dig through here. Here we have sand. That's okay. Here we have ice. Everything here is extremely cold, of course. We were going we to try this. 
We're gonna outright try, try it. Straightforward. Cross here. Um, give it our ladder. All of it, please. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna try it. We're gonna see uh, if that's gonna work out, if that's gonna be enough. And then we're gonna make this area here all radiant liquid pipes, and we will see with what temperature we are gonna come out with our oxygen. We could theoretically make this entire thing here radiant, but um, we will wait for that, especially since... Well, actually, radiant gas pipes... Um, what do we have here? We have aluminum, or even better. Perfect. Something just like this here is what I have in mind. And then we'd insulate it back up. There we go. Let's see what that will do. Alright, last strike. Once we have this here, we are officially ready to turn it on. Well, in our base right here, actually. We have to go a little bit further with it. Um, let's see. I'm gonna build everything insulated right now. We can change that whenever we feel like it. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna just come along here and all the way to, let's say, the top of our base. Uh, let's come into there. Let's come into there. And cycle 100, you heard the little happy chime right there. We have reached cycle 100 and we haven't lost a dupe yet. And we are about to have a bomb going. That is pretty neat, I would say. Uh, definitely have done worse before. Let's come down here as well. Need to come through anyway. May as well make it a ladder while we're at it. And yeah. All everything is a number 9 priority. Very good. In this case here, we definitely want that because I want to get this done right away. You will freeze the base with this oxygen? It depends on. It's going to come out here at 95 degrees. Um, because I am going to try to feed it this water here first. I think you're running risk of overcooling your O2 since you're pre-cooling it with the water coming in. I mean, melting the water is valuable in itself. <laughs> well, again, that's why we have both sides here. We have over here our cool steam vent and I'm going to try it with this right here. Uh, that is what I'm going to feed in there. But then the question is... Yeah, this here I want to I want to try second. I want to try this water here first. Obviously, that's not going to last forever or anything. There's no question about it. But for right now, I just want to try it. what would happen. Um, that is the idea for this entire build here. Trial and error. Obviously, if I'm pre-cooling it right here, I will just come straight across here and it'll be just fine. No problem at all. Sorry, didn't make that clear enough, guys. Then right here, we're just going to come down to this. And right here, we're going to come across, not through there, preferably. Um, right here. And then a bridge. That should get the job done. Feeding it straight into our um, infinite storage right here. Very good. Experimentation and results where science and engineering meets. Yes. Are all the machines in the Rodriguez gold? Crap, you're right. I can't see uh, none of them are. Son of a bitch. Hmm. They're not. They are not. Which makes it not possible to use this water because they will overheat at 75C. But, you know what? Let's screw it. Uh, in F2, what are we going to do? Just briefly. While they're building this whole piping network anyway, we can't just go back in here. All we have to do is put another vacuum in. That's why we still have everything in place. And um, let's use this fancy change button again. Let's see if the game crashes again. Oh god. It didn't. And order rebuild. And can I copy these settings now? No. Of course not. That would have been too easy. So, let's do this. Let's use this fancy new menu right here. That was a good catch, though. Uh, it would have been a slightly bigger issue once I started it up. Thankfully, we have more than enough gold laying around. That's a good thing. I'm going to rebuild it real quick. And on the bright side... The eyesore will be gone as well, which is this one piece of abyssalite right here. It's not operational yet, so it can still be ripped apart. Yes. Make a mini liquid lock to get in and fix it. Nah, we don't have to. 
You could get in without wasting the vacuum. Yes, I could. But it doesn't really matter, though. Oh, top air pump? Yes. All of it. Every single one has the little sign here now? Yes, yes, they all do. All of this here, high priority. Of course, they will build inside of the base first, because it's closest to where they are, so these here will be built first, but that's totally fine. All right, they're already tearing out uh, the uh, walls right here, but that's okay. The power is turned off, but that's also good. In F6, we can bring the pipe over in the meantime with a lower priority, because the pipe really doesn't matter too much. There we go. I, I still hate it, though, that they changed this here apparently from the beta. And they are actually tearing those buildings out. That is just... Just replace it. Just do it like a tile. Please. That would make things so much easier and faster. Now we have to deal with the debris again and everything else. Yes, it automatically puts in the uh, blueprint, but... Eh. It's not a fan of that. Maybe save the game first. Uh, usually you would be right, Croc, 100%. But thankfully, I have it set up that we are saving every single cycle. And we were just at the beginning of cycle 100 when I did it, so we would have lost basically nothing. I know how prone oxygen not included is to crashing. So uh, my default setting is save every single cycle, no matter what. <laughs> Uh, I think it's meant to be a quality of life change, not a balance change. If it let them overbuild uh, tiles like this, then it would really be a balance change. But with their silly blueprints, they're also doing it, though. They literally just pop up where you had to completely tear it out and rebuild it. You know what I mean? Why not just let me do it for materials as well? Just let the... Um, we still would have to deal with the debris. Uh, let the debris fall off and the new material put in. That wouldn't be that big of a change, you know? It would just be a time saving. It wouldn't really change anything, anything crazy. Yeah, but the blueprints are strictly cosmetic. Eh, you're not wrong. Why are you changing materials? Um, because I was made aware that our water here comes in at 95 degrees Celsius, which makes the output of our electrolyzer all the 95 degrees. When we take a look at the gas pumps right here, if I build one, and then if I make it out of copper, let's say, or out of iron, they have an overheat temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. Gold. Gold amalgam right here has a special ability, or a, or a special resource effect as written right here. Overheat temperature plus 50 degrees Celsius. So we are going from 75 degrees to 125. And with 125, all these systems in here will never have a problem of overheating. Our switches here don't matter anyway, just as little as our atmosphere sensors, they cannot overheat. Uh, they will go straight to melting, and for that we need a thousand degrees. So, yeah, that is why we have to change the materials here. I uh, made a logical mistake and didn't think about the hot temperature. I was planning it the entire time that I used this water here. <laughs> it never once crossed my mind that I should build the damn pumps out of gold. My god. The only problem is... If we do this without cooling and we come straight into here, it will be the same for those gas pumps here as well. Ah, uh, crap. Literally everything would have to be built out of gold. Yeah. We don't have a choice. If we want to go this route, which I do, uh, because right at the moment you can see that it's overpressured. It's um, not really um, condensing anymore. Right at this moment. Um, yeah. Once we do pump some water through here, through this radiant liquid pipe, it will change everything. 
it will literally change everything because now the steam will be able to condense again and we will get a lot more water out of there. You can cool the oxygen with the water tank. Yes, that is another very good idea. I could come with the insulated gas pipe just straight through the water tank, which would um, eliminate a lot of power used from the liquid tepidizer as well. There are so many ways to uh, skin this cat, as you say. Are the pipes gold? No, the pipes don't need to be gold. The radiant liquid pipe right here is actually made out of copper. Um, and these um, radiant gas pipes right here are or will be made out of aluminum ore. The only things that actually need to be made out of gold are the pumps themselves as well as the electrolyzers. Those have to be gold or they will overheat. <clears throat> Give me one second, guys. I need to grab me another drink because I'm... I have such a dry throat again. Not even, not even funny. <clears throat> ah, much better. All right. At least this pipe here has been done completely. Very good. Very, very good indeed. And we will see how much this here will cool it down. I'm really curious to see that. That should be doing a hell of a lot. It's copper lead pipe, don't question it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come on, guys. Bring the gold. Plop it in. Let's go. Oh, of course. That's why. As soon as the deconstruction was done, a new build contract was given here, and the build contract is, of course, at an, as a level 5 priority, which is doing nothing, as usual. Yeah, we don't have a choice. We need to come in here as well. It's good for future-proofing anyway. Um, 75 degrees are just not going to do it. Thankfully, once again, when we dig in here, all we have to do is uh, get out a little bit of uh, carbon dioxide once again, and that's it. It'll be fine. So, let's do it. We will have to do it, unfortunately, from both sides here. Um, let's see. We should be able to do something like uh, this here. Should be able to reach both of them. No, that's one too low, I believe. Uh, cancel both. Not build. Deconstruct. Let's see these two tiles and these two tiles right here. Let's tear those out and let's get back in there. And the same thing will be true over here. Let's tear these two out. Not the bottom one though, never the bottom one to keep our water uh, put. And then replace this gas pump right here once again with gold. And then right here the same thing. Replace it with gold. And these here the same way. Gold. Gold gold and last but not least gold what a uh, rookie mistake to make that is truly embarrassing not gonna lie about that either truly embarrassing but here we are careful your tile deconstruct doesn't take out the pipes in deconstruct i have chosen over here buildings only on the right side um i didn't make that mistake <laughs> Uh, yeah, of course. Please don't run. That's just a waste of power for no particular reason. These areas here are so small for the amount of pumps that we have. It doesn't cost really that much power to create a vacuum in here. So it's not that big a deal. How are we doing down here on the bottom? Uh, looks like some water must have molten. Because I'm pretty sure we had two tiles right here, if I'm not mistaken. So that's good.
Pumps are being torn out. Everything inside of our spawn has been completed. So once again, we can come in here and we can tear out all of, or better to say, pick up all of that debris. You want to get rid of it. You want to not have a single piece left in here, if at all possible. And then, of course, once the last one here is torn out, we once again give it number nine priority. So they actually built this stuff, preferably. That would be nice. Very good. And now we should have four pumps on the bottom and two on the top. All made out of wonderful, wonderful gold amalgam. Very good. The top one is ready to be closed off again. No more debris. This here. Let's double check it this time now that we have another rogue piece of abyssalite in here. All of it's good. All of it's good. Close it all back off. Wonderful. And then we're just going to turn the power back on. And we should have once again no problem at all with our wonderful system. And then we should have everything that we need to turn it on. Just as simple as that. Calories are looking great now. Yes, they do. We are up to 81,000. Could still be a little bit better. What happened here? A, a piece of 106 grams of ice. Really? Oh my goodness. But yes. Oh, and look at that. Cycle 102. I wanted to check it. Cycle 100 and forgot about it. But right here, we have now an entire row of bristle blossoms, which comes in very, very handy. You can see here our gristle berries. Uh, why is it laying around up there? Uh, because we have it not stored here. Yeah. Guys, bring it down here, please. Um, might as well. It's nice and cold here. And it's a sterile atmosphere, so that's always helpful. And now we can turn our power back on on the top here. No, we can't because these insulated tiles you are missing. But as soon as those are in, we can turn it back on. Last few pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Elizabeth is here. Hello, everyone. Oh, Spawn. Yes. Yep. You're coming at the right moment. We are about to turn this bad boy on. So in F2, once again, let's connect our power wires, all of them. Let's create our vacuum. Let's uh, start from scratch here, just like this. There we go. Yes, we are currently uh, using so much power that it's not even funny. Of course, that is expected, though. Uh, it will not run like this here anytime soon. So you, you're fine. Are you sure that's a sterile atmosphere there? At least that's what it told me. It's actually deep frozen now, and it says the sterile atmosphere as well. So, I hope the guy's not lying to me. <laughs> Looks yellow. Let's see. Well, I, was <laughs> I must have looked in the right moment when there is only carbon dioxide. So, yes, there is some polluted oxygen. That's our base looking, though. We haven't done a damn thing yet. And it looks better than it ever has. Isn't that insanity? It's got to be all of this polluted oxygen right here. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. It tells me insufficient uh, oxygen generation, consumed less cycle, 838 kilograms, produced less cycle, 676. So it's got to be this polluted water right here <laughs> that is currently saving our butts. Oh my god. But we'll take it. We're not complaining about it. So that's a good thing. Right here, we should be back. Yep. Right now. F4. Looking pretty, pretty good. Alright. Now, let's do a, a last check in F2. We have all of these powered. All of these have power. And those two on the top have power. In F6, currently we have nothing connected yet, but we will have something connected here very soon. <clears throat> so that should be perfectly fine as well. Obviously, when we come in from the left, we're not going to use the bottom row, but we also don't need to. Um... 
this here is only meant for when we are coming in from the right side and not from the left side, so it doesn't matter. In F7, we currently have our pipes right here, which have right here gas meant in it. But due to the um, inherent possibility of overpressuring these pipes, we are going to cut these pipes here off. We don't want them. And right here, this pipe is already cut off, so that's very, very good. All right, we should be ready in F6. Let's take our pipe right here, or better to say, we will need a bridge, of course, something like this here. And let's come in from the left straight over. We are going to run hot water in. And we are going to start very simple um, with only one of those um, 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 electrolyzers right here. Probably the one on the left right here that probably makes the most sense. Since this here is the oxygen, we are going to send straight to our base. So, let's turn the left one on. Uh, this pump here should also turn on as, as soon as this here is done. And then we need to set up our Atmo sensors. Those Atmo sensors are not going to be set up yet because we first need to prime it. But once it is properly primed, then we can go ahead and actually make sure that, um, well, they are set right. At the moment, we're just going to say below 5,000. So they run at all times until we are properly primed. <clears throat> Come on. Uh. Oh, hydro sensor. Uh, we are saying below 500 kilograms. Of course, we don't want that. We're going to say above 500 kilograms. And now it should actually do something. Let's see here. One piece of water is coming in. Actually, here on the top. My mistake. These here we want to turn on. Uh, this one we want to turn off. And then. Let's watch. All we need is that this entire top row here. Is nothing but hydrogen. That is uh, what we actually want right now. So. We're going to wait here a little bit. That uh, shouldn't take too long because we are pumping all the hydrogen, sorry, all the oxygen on the bottom out basically right away. And everything up here in the top um, should stay hydrogen. That is the general idea here. A few more pieces of oxygen, of course, right here. You can see it. It's immediately getting very warm uh, because we're just pumping it out here into the atmosphere for right now. Back to the F4 overlay. And now we have it. Now we can go ahead and we can set this atmos sensor here to below. Uh, just so we can get this um, um, oxygen out right here, which we should have right around now. And now we can set it to above, let's say 500 grams. And down here on the bottom, we're going to say above 1000 grams. And we're going to copy it over to the other one. Just as simple as that. And in F7, we should see nothing. There we go. There's our oxygen. And in the F4 overlay, we can see no more uh, oxygen here. And we should never get oxygen again either. Therefore, let's connect this. And cut this here off. And then down here on the bottom. Since we only have one electrolyzer running, there's obviously no point in running all of these. So this right side atmos sensor controls these three pumps. Uh, we can just set it to a uh, send a green signal if above 10,000 grams, which should never ever happen. So it doesn't matter. And in the automation overlay, we can just go ahead. Well, the automation overlay is actually not going to work for this particular pump right here. Uh, how are we going to do this in the F2 overlay? We can't do it either. Yes, I didn't really consider that. What we can do, though, is we can just snip off this here. So even though it's going to run, it's just going to run for a second and then never ever again. And we can connect this here and tear out the gas vent. There we have it. All right, this here is going to run only one of them for right now, just for testing purposes. We can see in F3, it's extremely hot, everything in here. And soon we will turn on a second one, a uh, second electrolyzer. But at the moment, one is more than enough for our purposes here. That should be right here in F7, our uh, first piece of hydrogen that is going up here into our infinite storage, which is currently still connected to a gas vent. <laughs> okay, not want to do that. Uh, same down here. Don't want these here anymore. Get rid of them, guys. 
There we go. That's another good case of having automation available to us. Can just turn them off. Something just like this here. Of course, now our first hydrogen actually went out into the atmosphere. This here also. Please get rid of it with a number nine priority. Because currently we are still pumping it into the atmosphere instead of into our base. Come on, Gremlin. Get it done. Where are you going? Really? Oh, goodness. Yes, our hydrogen storage is looking good. Very good, even. And the gas vent is a goner. So this here is now the hydrogen, or better to say the oxygen, that is going to go into our base. And now I'm curious to see. We are coming out at 82 degrees. Very nice. Where are we going to be at the end here? Oh my god. <laughs> ah, okay, we're cooling it way too much down here. Way, way too much. I didn't expect it to have that big of an impact. Uh, how wrong a guy can be, I guess. Yeah, we are already right here. Let's see. We're at 40 degrees here. We're at 9 degrees right there. So let's see if we can go ahead and replace all these pipes here with insulated ones. And then let's try this again. <laughs> Number nine priority, please. Thank you. Are you going to use the spawn to heat the water base instead of the liquid temp? Uh, I'm tr trying to do a couple of things. I was like, I wanted to see how much this will cool it down. I expected it to have a big impact. I didn't expect it to be that big. Oh my goodness. Let's see here in F7, we're going to come in still with 83, and we're still going out with negative 30. <laughs> Come on, guys, more insulated pipes. Let's see. We are still down to 9, 10, 14, 15 degrees, 16 degrees. That is actually perfect right there. If it would be a consistent stream, that would actually work out just fine. So, to get a consistent stream, all we have to do is do something like this here, and turn another one on. Just as simple as that. Once again, we're pumping out more hydrogen, which is currently just being collected in our infinite storage here on the top. And now, we're producing 2 times 888 grams per second of oxygen, which two pumps, uh, two pumps cannot really handle. So, uh, these here will overpressure very soon, and then turn off. I seem to have arrived just in time for chat about pee water and consistent streams. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you made it just in time. Look at this. 20 degrees. That is exactly what that should look like. Couldn't be much better than that, as a matter of fact. I mean, it could be 25, I guess, but uh, at 20 degrees? You won't hear me complaining. That is perfect. <clears throat> and right at the moment... Of course, um, we are using a, a lot of energy. Um, we have down here our total of five coal generators. And we are using a total of uh, two gas pumps right here. Uh, two electrolyzers and another gas pump on and off here on the top. So it is quite a lot of more energy that we're using. Um, but we are still keeping up very, very nicely. Here's a gas bridge that has no gas, out gas output, of course. But now that we are slowly but steadily accumulating our hydrogen, already at 7.3 kilograms per tile, um, we can uh, take care of our power over here as well. We can put in some hydrogen generators. We can put them basically down here wherever we want. Uh, our main base is up here. So anything down here is absolutely fair game, for real. Yeah, we can see it. It says the max pressure. That's because our gas pumps, our two gas pumps over here on the left, cannot keep up with them. So 888 and 888 makes about 1740 or so. Uh, when we turn on a third one, with a third one, we would need not two more pumps, but three more pumps. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it as is right now. Even if those here are turning off our max pressure every so often, that's totally fine. Uh, I think our base will thank us for it um, very, very quickly. It will push this carbon dioxide here down in basically no time. As a matter of fact, eventually what I want to do is I want to come over here with this pipe and split it one more time um, over here on the right side so we can properly distribute 
our oxygen throughout the entirety of our base. But yeah, we built a full Rodriguez and currently we are using not even 50% of its capacity. Isn't that nice? And we are still getting tons and tons of hydrogen out of it that we just don't use currently at all. Currently it's all coal. You can see we are down to 16.3 tons, which means currently we are outpacing um, our, uh, our hatches here right now. Because they're cramped. Look at those. We have so many stone hatchling eggs. Oh, good grief. But we have a smooth hatchling as well. Let's see. Do we have any more copper? We do have one more. So let's plop in one more. And this one here is going to be for smooth hatches. Time to get that going as well. Let's come over here. And let's put another power shut off. And another automation wire. There we go. Very, very good. Slowly but steadily, we are making some really nice progress here. <laughs> and here are polluted water. Negative 18.5. This should be melting anytime now. Our water is itself by now about negative 15 degrees, so it may actually not be melting. <laughs> we may actually have to uh, dig it out. But again, it's polluted water. It's not like we care too much. What is down here? Down here we have a supply teleporter. So we found the supply teleporter, but we still have not found the actual teleporter. That is actually hilarious. Oh yeah, that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. Yeah, we need to pump out this polluted water here. We don't really have too much of a choice. Let's dig these two tiles here up. And the stuff that we can't actually reach. Let's mop it. Just so to get rid of it, so we don't have to deal with it later. Thankfully, all the slime doesn't matter. That's that's one of the really nice things. Uh, the slime lung here doesn't exist because it's just too cold for it. All right, the yeah, spawn action is 100% completed. I guess what we could do is to celebrate our properly functioning spawn over here is let me take a look at our blueprints once again. And let's see what we got. More gloves, but this time in lime and not in black. Isn't that nice? Uh, how many gloves are there? <laughs> we have a 50 gram piece of ice right here that decides to uh, go between melting and not melting every so often. That's funny. How, many, how much more water do we have? Yes, of course, we are soon going to be out of this water right here. Very soon we are... Uh, there are a lot of gloves. Too many gloves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically, you just create those, I guess, once, uh, slap them into paint, and then just go through the color wheel <laughs> to create new ones. Is that how that works? I don't know. I'm not a game developer, but probably pretty close to the truth here. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. With this hot water, this system here actually works like a charm. That is actually really, really nice. But again, soon we're going to be out of hot water because we do not yet have a, a proper mechanic for actually um, cooling this here down on the top. Therefore, no more steam is condensing and we're not getting any more. Not just colors, there are long gloves, short gloves. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is the infinite gas storage below this bomb for extra O2? Yes, that is exactly what it's for. Like, two of those you will always be going straight to the base, no matter what. But if you want any more of it, uh, rocketry, for example, later on, or something like that. Uh, that's what this here is for. Currently not in use, because we have all those four pumps here turned off, as well as our two electrolyzers. Okay, down here. I really don't want to go any lower, because right here we have our metal volcano. Um, I mean... I don't want to go any lower, of course, with our uh, power generation on our right side here. Uh, that's what I mean here. <laughs> and RNG to RGB. <laughs> that's funny. That is really funny. Where can I see the blueprints? Can I see them in here somewhere? The fly closet? Duplicants? No. Uh, Restyle outfit? Let's see here. Oh my god, look at all those jackets and shit. Oh my god, here are the gloves. Yeah, saying too many gloves is clearly an understatement. Hey, wait a second, didn't we get... Okay, here they are. I was like, where are the black gloves? 
Oh my god. Yeah, I'm not going to miss with that. That ain't happening. That's definitely not happening. How about you here? Do you have anything? No. How about the power transformer? Nothing. I don't know which buildings have actually a blueprint and which not. Nothing. Water cooler? Nothing. Research? Nothing. Nothing anywhere? Alright then. Let's take another look into research. Now we actually have some time to do some more research here, I guess. Um, because next on the list is actually material study. We need to get down this path right here, because otherwise we will have a problem here very, very soon. Uh, the question is just, what are we going to do about radiation? Um, there's not a hell of a lot that we can actually do without having radiation. I love that, though. Definitely going to color coordinate my dupes by either work cycle or job. I guess that's a use case. I guess that's a valid use case. Um, right here, plastics, exosuits. Yeah, let's get us some exosuits in. Definitely can't hurt to do that. <clears throat> I'm excited to see how you handle the rockets. That'll be another hot minute before we get to that, but um, there are plenty of ways to uh, mess with the rockets around for sure. This ice here is now down to 21 degrees. It used to be at 33. Okay. Surprised we still have water. I thought we already ran out. But okay. Well, let's start. Uh, stop messing around and uh, let's take a look in power at our hydrogen generators right here. Uh, hydrogen generators need 100 grams per second in hydrogen gas. And when we take a look at our electrolyzer right here, it creates 112 grams per second. So per one single electrolyzer, we can build basically one um, generator. Up until the point when we get up to, I think it's eight or so electrolyzers, which we don't have, so it doesn't matter. So with our four right here, we can easily build four, even a fifth without an issue. Uh, currently only two are running though. So let's go back into power and let's grab us once again our hydrogen generator. And we're just going to connect it to the rest of our system right here. Um, let's say one right here and one right there to get the job done. And we're just going to plop him in. Just as simple as that. As usual. Right here. We're just going to dig all of this stuff here out. Just so we have it available to us. The four will perfectly fit into there. And in F7, I was about to say that is of course not correct. Right here. A little bit of automation to come over. A little bit of power wire. Wouldn't hurt either. We're just going to come out of this one smart battery right here. That is totally fine. No problem whatsoever. And then the last thing that we need is of course this time in F7 a uh, pipe that we bring over all the way so we can actually feed these things and of course with the gas bridge right here and that is what we're going to use first uh, before we do anything else it should be sufficient we're going to come all the way down here all the way through there yeah right here we're going to come through as well gas bridge and then mm -hmm. can we just come in the back uh, what a, who is going to stop us right there we go we're just going to make this here all the way through to there. That should solve our problem right away. No problem whatsoever. And then some more tiles right there so we can actually reach all the stuff. There we go. That should get the job done. Now they just got to put it in. And we have two more hydrogen generators. And those things are actually really, really nice. Because when we take a look, these generate 800 watts of power apiece. So 1,600 watts are being added to our system by... Basically just as a byproduct. Automation, already here. Just coming off of the smart battery together with our cold generators. Mm, you know, we could actually build an extra smart battery to prioritize this here. That's probably a smarter way of doing it. Yeah, let's put us a new smart battery in just above here. Well, not like this. Oh, we are missing, of course, a, a little bit of material. My goodness. Where are my smooth, smooth hatches when I need them? Let's uh, make sure that this actually gets done up here on the top. Right at the moment, we still have to use the rock crusher. Let's build us another 5. Actually, we need another 10. There we go. Again, 50% loss from our rock crusher, but soon that will have an end. We are, we are going down to 25% loss.
Alright, guys. Let's plop it in. Oxygen temperature, just checking it once again, up to 22 degrees, that's fine. And in F3, do we already see a dent? No, not yet, really. We are pumping the oxygen in here, but we really don't see a dent into the temperature yet. Right there. It's actually hilarious. <laughs> now we are actually worse off than before. Um, that makes all the perfect sense because we are completely out of algae. So currently, all we are getting in to the base is this one pipe here. And this one pipe here is only pumping one kilogram per second. So we are actually getting less than with our oxygen diffusers. No, actually the same amount. So we should actually getting, uh, sh should be getting in the same amount, but it's just very lopsided in the base. Instead of having it nice and even, now we have it all over here on the left. <laughs> and we have this one area right here in the middle where we just have basically no oxygen. That's just hilarious. Did you check the battery's charge sensor mod? No, I have not checked out that particular mod. But for example, the mod that was recommended um, to have these here all on the screen, I did get this one. Very valuable. Very good mod. Love that thing. All right. For right now, we are good. But the thing is, though, I do eventually want to come over to the other side as well with our pipe right here. Just to even it out a little bit. What is that mod called? I want it. That is a good question. Let me check it out for you real quick. I wrote it down. That is the better info cards mod. Uh, really good mod. Really simple. Should be in the game like that. Because usually if you have an infinite storage like this, it just goes down outside of the screen. And you can't see only, or you can see only half of what you actually have in there. Which is, uh, truly sucks, not gonna lie. Few more pieces of pipe and this is done. Making progress. Very, very nice. The pipes are coming in as well. How much water do we have left? Can't be a lot. 678. It actually looks like that most of our steam has condensed again. Yeah, we are still slowly but steadily pumping more heat into our insulated tiles right here. So that actually works better than I expected. Just of course, our cool steam vent here has an average flow. Let's take a look here. Average output of 1,396 grams per second. And our electrolyzer over here takes 1,000 grams per second. So this one steam vent here can obviously not keep up with those two electrolyzers forever. Um, as a matter of fact, we will be at an end here very, very soon. All right. Hydrogen is almost flowing. Do we have now enough resources? Yes, we do. We can just put another battery over here in F2. Get the heavy watt wire over. And then let's change our automation just slightly. Uh, we're going to come over, or better to say, down right there. And snip this here off. And then deconstruct it so they're on their separate networks. And then we just got to set up the smart battery to turn on a little bit earlier than this smart battery right here. So we use the hydrogen first and the coal second. That is what we want to do here. Multiple smart batteries may have different charge levels causing generators to activate at different times. Yes, they definitely do that. Um, like for example... Yeah, these two here, if I would set them to the same setting, chances are that uh, our hydrogen generators and coal generators would not turn on at the exact same time. But in this case here, that is actually exactly what we want. Right here, we have it set to 95 and 10. So we're going to set this one here to 15 and 90. Not 80. 90. There we go. Actually, the highest threshold should be higher. 100. So we, like, it can actually be the same, screw it. The low threshold is the important one. The low threshold here needs to be higher uh, than on this one right there. So let's see if that will work out for us. We, of course, need to first have some hydrogen for this to work at all. So that would be good. Three more pieces of pipe. We're getting there. 
and then we will see how that looks like. What was the filter gas pump mod? Literally that. It's called uh, filter gas pump, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and in the filter gas pump mod, if you go into research, uh, it's called the uh, miniaturized valves, which should be up here. Valve miniaturization. Uh, you get the filter gas pump and the filter liquid pump. And I think the vacuum pump is that in the game, or is that also a pump that is actually added? I can't remember. Or was it a mini gas pump? I think one of the two is actually added by the mod as well. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. Okay, we have the first pieces of hydrogen coming through here. Very neat. And now, since we have our gas bridge right here, thanks to the priority of the gas bridge, uh, we will get all the hydrogen down this way up until this pipe here is full, all the way backed up to the gas bridge. Only when the gas bridge here is backed up, uh, then the hydrogen will make its way into our infinite storage, which by now holds 40 kilograms per tile, which is nothing to scoff at. And right here we can see our hydrogen generators are turning on before anything else. Very, very good. And now only the hydrogen generators will be uh, running up until the point where uh, they run out and can't keep up. If they can't keep up anymore, then the code generators will turn on. Very, very good. Which allows us now to uh, get rid of those hatches here in the middle or on the bottom, it doesn't matter, and make them smooth hatches. And that is exactly what we want to do. Very, very good. Slowly but steadily, it all takes shape the way it's supposed to do. Down here we have six. Up here we have six. We have two eggs right here. Very nice. All of our crops are happy. In F1, we are looking decent, slowly but steadily, now that it's, um, it, I haven't changed anything, it's over here on the left side, but slowly but steadily, our oxygen is creeping over to the right side without us actually building anything. I still want to do that, though. I just want to make sure that all this here is working the way it should. Sure as hell looks like it. Yeah, that is exactly what that should look like. I think we are golden. Very, very nice indeed. Let's dig all this stuff here up and get over here straight, just so we have it available when we need it. And as a matter of fact, let's do the same thing down here on the bottom as well. Now, down here, this polluted water, we need to do something about it. Um, the easiest way is just to pump it out while we can, which is, well, now. Nothing stopping us from doing so. Just with a standard liquid pipe. No, let's do an insulated liquid pipe. Uh, where do we go? What is the best thing to do here? We can literally just come up straight. And connect it right there. And of course a bridge. There we go. A little bit of power. We can just make our life easier. And just connect it with the heavy watt one. Doesn't matter. Again, we are going to tear this here back out as soon as it's empty. And while we are at it, let's put in a few ladders. Maybe right. Do we have a fire pole right here? Yes, we do. So we can come over here. And over here. Um, that should actually make everything reachable. Come over here. Over there. And one more up top. And then give a command to dig all of this stuff here out. There we go. Alright, dupes. Let's get her done. So we can actually get a little bit lower. And we can finally figure out where the hell the oil is. Like, how far are we away from it? I would assume it shouldn't be that much. But we will see what we can find here. Dupes hard at work at five times speed, always a good thing to see. Our water, 
it just ran out. I figured that would be the case. So what we are going to do is, what are we going to do here? Ah, questions over questions. We could, we could literally use our water. I mean, there's really nothing that's stopping us from doing that, is there? We are coming in with the water. It's coming out at 70 degrees. We are cooling it down with the water itself already. We could just go... Let me think about this for a second. We can come put this pipe over to right around here, build a gas bridge into the water, and then go with, doesn't really matter too much, three radiant gas pipes along, um, and then come back out with another gas bridge and connect it to the original pipe. I think that's probably the best thing to do here. Then we're just gonna switch over. We're not gonna use these two uh, uh, these two pumps, but these two pumps, and that should get the job done. All we may need, well, theoretically, we shouldn't even have to. Yeah, that should that should just get the job done. We will see the temperature at which we come out here, but we will just try it and see what happens. The pipe and wire noise are just weir weirdly satisfying. <laughs> uh, that is certainly something you get used to in this game a lot, yes. Those uh, The sound of those large transformers here, for example. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and right now we can see our spawn just died because it ran out of water. Surprise, surprise. We knew it would be coming. It was just a question of when. But the system here is now done, almost at least. So we can go ahead, build one pipe right here, and then, of course, a liquid pipe right there, which should now reduce our flow by 50%, uh, going through our loop right here, which should still be more than sufficient, I would believe. Mods are being exchanged in the chat. Definitely a good thing. I will have to take a look at that um, at that uh, battery's charge sensor mod myself. Somehow I didn't. I thought I wrote it down, but I can't find it in my notes. So I also looked at the laser turret and the engineer build priority. Um, I held off on both of those, especially on the laser turret. The laser turret is really nice for uh, killing critters, but I would prefer not to introduce. Um, too many foreign, completely foreign buildings into the game. But we will see. I may use it eventually. <laughs> Alright, our loop is being filled up. Of course, we are still pumping it now out of here. That is a problem. How is the content of the gas negative 2.5 degrees? How do you explain that? I honestly... Oh, it just tells all the polluted oxygen behind it. I was looking at the rest of it. Ah, at 25 degrees. The inside of the gas pipe itself is at negative 2.5. All right, let's switch this here over. We're going to copy the settings from here to there. And here we're going to say above 50,000 once again, which will never happen, of course. Now, three pumps are pumping. We don't want three pumps to pump. We're going to deconstruct this one and we're going to deconstruct this here. And that should be a self-solving problem. In the automation right here, we can of course snip this one off, which turns it off effectively, and we turn it back on at will. My main battery in the base has 4.2 megajoules. Oh my god. That's a lot of battery power you got there. <laughs> Alright, Mason. Take a deep breath. There you go. Get rid of it. Let's see. What are we getting now here? Of course, now we have our two generators over here and our two pumps over here. We're coming out at 24 degrees. And right here, it doesn't do a hell of a lot, which is very nice. Very good. We're coming through here. And this pump here is still active. The only thing is just we're waiting until we get a, above 600 degrees. And then we introduce the water into here. So it's not like we are not using this water here still as well.
Very good. Just easier on our constantly running. Because we're using the two wrong electrolyzers. So actually, let's turn this one on and this one on. And this one off and this one off. Let's just swap them over. It should make these two here run more or less constantly. Uh, yeah, much, much better. Very nice. That's the nice thing about having some automation available, especially not if you use not the entire thing. Definitely helpful. And we can see that our coal generators turn on when our hydrogen generators cannot keep up. Very good. Just as expected. And in F6, all of this water is now being pumped in here as well. Again, this is just a temporary storage. It's not going to stay like that. Uh, soon we're going to fix that actually for good. Just need a few more ingredients for it that I have not seen yet. But we will find them soon, I'm sure. Just gotta dig deeper, and to dig deeper, we need to get rid of the water first. Why is there nothing in here? Didn't I say polluted ice? Did it just melt right away when we dug it up? Or are you guys just doing nothing? Let's give it a number nine priority so you do it first. But theoretically, if that has just molten in here, yeah, that just means more power being used instead of dupes carrying it away and putting it in there. Ah, it looks like they're putting some in there now. There we go. That's better. You can add a switch to the middle pumps using a bridge if I saw it correctly. How do you mean exactly? You mean those pumps right here? I just control them with the pliers. It's basically just this simple. But yes, nice oxygen at 23 degrees. Pressurization in the base is, uh, okay. I've seen better, but it's totally fine. And down here, currently none of our gas pumps is running because this one here is effectively disabled and this one right here is just completely turned off. Ad stopwatch starting, you just got an ad. Okay. I will actually look through your comments uh, after the stream and I will take a look at the timestamps and see um, exactly how long that was because it seemed to be at least um, perceptively from my end that it was a uh, pretty long time. So that would be totally fine in my opinion, I would say. Alright, let's get rid of this water. I want to keep digging. We have now Atmos which is available to us, which is very nice. And we also had a symbol read. Um, I think we have a symbol read. Let's take a look here. See all symbol, symbol read seed. We actually have five of them. Look at that. Very, very neat. Uh, we may as well go ahead with our polluted water here and start us a symbol read farm at this point. Come on, there's almost nothing left. I'm going to turn up the speed to 10 times just to get rid of this water right here. Let's get rid of it. You can see that only our hydrogen is currently running. And now our coal generators, every once in a while they turn on, but not very often. And our coal actually increases. And, oh, we have our first smooth hatch. So, where are we going to put him? Croc says, since the last time you wrote, no new ones have appeared. Google must be reading our comments and complaints. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yes. How much water do you use to run your steam engines? How much water do you use to run your steam engines? Can you please elaborate on that questions? <laughs> uh, not entirely sure what the question is here, sorry. <laughs> right here. We have a six right up here on the top. We have seven. I'm just going to be ice cold. All down here on the bottom will die. We're going to get rid of them. We don't need them anymore. Therefore, we're just going to go. Where is the attack one? My crazy, not Rango. Attack. We're going to annihilate every last one of those hatches right here and make us some barbecue out of it. Speaking of barbecue, 155,000. 
Very, very nice. Steam per tile, perhaps. I'm taming a copper volcano. Um, if you're using my um, my volcano, uh, sorry, metal volcano tamer uh, version 3.0, um, you can use something like 10 kilograms per tile, and you should do just fine. Do about 20 kilograms per uh, for a copper volcano. The nice thing is there is no such thing as too much up until you reach 50 kilograms per tile. Then it is too much. But using 20, using 30, it doesn't really hurt anything, right? That's the nice thing about it. Just when you use 50, you will actually overpressure the volcano and it will not erupt anymore. So you got to be careful about that. But other than that, you're doing fine. What are you doing here, Stonehatch? Get wrangled. Stone Hatchling. Somebody must have grabbed you out of there. And I guess they just dropped you. Unless this thing here is full. Oh, it doesn't count stone hatches. So it literally just counts exactly what's in here. That's actually interesting. It doesn't count any other critters. I would say that's worse than it was before. Because here it just counts everything. It says only put these in here. But if anything else is in here, it will still count it. Found out that 10 kilograms per tile was too little for my iron volcano, and 20 kilograms per tile works for iron volcano. Okay. I don't think... I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly. I mean, it has been a while since I built this thing. The last time, I think I used 10 kilograms. But yeah, again. Better too much than not enough. You can put another pickup point, put every other critter in it and set it to zero. Okay. I guess that would be a solution, yeah. That makes sense. It's just somewhat odd behavior. I wrote that to you at the beginning of the stream. Oh my god. I'm apologizing, but that was about four hours ago, so... <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> You're talking about 10 kilo. I'm talking. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, 10 kilograms of water per tile on the bottom. I don't remember exactly what the mass was. I'm pretty sure that I mean um, um, a water per um, tile on the floor. I would have to look at it again. I honestly don't remember. It has been so long ago. I know that that per steam tile, again, 50 kilograms is too much, or better to say, it will overpressure it at 50 kilograms. But usually, I have had a lot of people in the comments, for example, of the video ask me, um, Hey, my uh, auto sweeper is um, overheating. And it's always a steam issue. There's never enough steam in there. Uh, Clive said they did that so you can customize a range for every critter. Okay. Come on, guys. Uh, this thing here. We're going to turn the hatches and the hatchlings off. And we are going to priority nine. Can you please annihilate him? That would be really nice. And the hatchling eggs right here. Um, up here on the top, we have currently seven, which means we can plop one egg up here to the top without an issue. That will work just fine. Uh, we're not even gonna incubating those eggs. It's totally okay right now. Um, and this one here, we are going to crack. Just so we get rid of it. Of course, now you're wrangling it instead of attacking it. Son of a gun. Please, kill him. Kill them all. Make me barbecue. Of course. Now we have an egg up there in the hatch. And now they're cramped. <laughs> oh god. You dupes. You dupes. Kill them all. This one here. Are you the one that actually has the kill command on it? 
Yes, cancel the attack on you. Alright, two meat are done. And now we can say smooth hatchling. And in the critter feeder, we can turn off the hatch and go all the way down to find us the smooth hatchling and the smooth hatch. And we're gonna feed him straight away copper ore. There we go. Slowly but steadily, we're getting there. Ugh, oh, you get those dupes to do what you actually want him to do, I'm telling you, it's a disaster. Egg cracker. Make me another couple of eggs here. The first one has been picked up. Very good. Put it into the cracker. And up here on the top. Are we still cramped? Yes. So let's make me one more. This is the one on the top. That should then make it somewhat okay again for right now. What do we have here? Hatchling, hatchling egg. Do we have two eggs in here? Son of a gun. Oh yeah, that's right. The stone hatches can be switched slowly but steadily as well. You are 100% correct. They're still on copper ore. Um, not plug slugs. Not smog slugs. Not smooth hatches. Here are the stone hatches. We're going to feed him a sedimentary rock. And we can see it. The first 93.8 kilograms of copper have been excreted by the little smooth hatchling. Very, very nice. My pump is still pumping. Ay, 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 ay. Come on, pump. Pump it. Turning up the speed once again. Come on, get rid of it. That's why the 10 times speed mod does come in handy. Quite often. There we go. We can go ahead and deconstruct this pump here. And mop up the rest of the water. And then we can go ahead and dig ourselves all the way to here. And all the way to there. No problem whatsoever. That's the highest priority. And soon we will see what is going on down here. Can we already see oil? Here we have uranium ore. That comes in handy. That's definitely a good thing. And we have the supply teleporter output. We have not found the input yet or the um, the actual teleporters. That's fascinating. I don't think I've ever gotten to like uh, cycle 112 without just finding it. Usually it's pretty close to the base. Where the hell is the teleporter? It has to be up here, you would think. Very odd. But we'll find it one way or another. As I like to say, it can run, but it cannot hide. Also, this algae terrarium over here. Don't need that anymore. Don't have any more algae anyway. Well, we do, but it's not dug up. Just as little as our oxygen diffusers. They're just sitting here, completely idle. And we are looking still somewhat decent in here. Soon, we will probably get in a second one. Or better to say, turn on a third uh, electrolyzer right here. And then slowly but steadily come with our second pipe into our base to make sure that we actually pressurize it properly. But right at the moment... We are doing just fine. Breathability is at 87%. It's totally okay. Shouldn't there water be coming in here? Why isn't it? Huh. Quite interesting. Do I literally have to snip this here to get water through here? Looks like it. That's odd. Shouldn't this bridge here have priority? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't have priority. I have a bridge here, that's clear, but still though, this bridge here is a further in the front of the flow direction, so it should have priority, but it doesn't. Oh, 
All right, going further down. Slowly but steadily going down. We have some poke shells here. That's very nice. Going to leave those alo alone for right now, though. Now we found uh, more excellent fruits now and we don't need them anymore. That's funny. Just my humor right there. No, it's the opposite. Let me look at it again. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the outflow tile of any building always gives priority to flow in the pipe. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I did think of it the the wrong way around. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. Thankfully, we don't have any water in here anyway. But the steam is actually condensing really nicely. I'm actually surprised that it still works that that long, but that's okay. You can add a pair of overlapping bridges to get the priority you want. Yes, I could add one this way around. What do we have here? A biobot builder. Very neat, but not what I'm looking for. <laughs> I don't know how to illustrate what I mean. I do know what you mean. I appreciate it, though, Jay. And Croc. Let's deconstruct our way through here. We're gonna just keep on going straight. <laughs> as straight as we can, as long as we can. lab window here we should be able to deconstruct as well just as well as this lab wall right here even though it doesn't matter we can't just build through it but let's get rid of it we have a uh, bloody butt seed here that's really neat should have checked that earlier we probably have a bunch of those laying around don't we buddy butt seeds no we don't really i would have assumed that we should probably found a few on our way this is actually the first one we found wow is that radiation Yes, there should be a little bit of a radiation right here. Uh, there's my radiation overview. That is a radiation, but it's completely negligible. It's it's nothing. The dupes are nowhere near long enough in that area. It is uh, the lab window is actually uh, deconstructible. I think this lab desk here is only demolishable though. But the lab window, that one's fine. We're gonna keep on going down. It's the same with this locker here. Also, the locker can only be demolished, for which we don't have a dupe. Does that mean you have some glass now? Yes, I do have a little bit of glass now, and I can get glass out of, uh, well, out of this window here as well. Uh, we got five kilograms of glass. <laughs> it's uh not really uh, that much come on still no oil good grief how deep can it be But we have another some type of building right here. You can't tell me that's how I teleported the deep, right? There's no way in hell. I'm not gonna believe that. I refuse. I refuse to believe it. We also have some drywall here made out of obsidian. Sure. Let's take a look into our skills real quick. We haven't really looked at our skills in a long time. Look at this. Uh, also because we don't really need anything right now. Do we have a builder? That can go down the demolition range. Yes, right here. Frozen hair himself. 
uh, can become our demolition guy. And you know, you know what? Crit wrenching two. Let's take a look around here. Uh, frozen hair, of course, you will get a new hat, a demolition hat. So we now have a demolition guy just so we can get rid of these buildings down there. Uh, what is fine? Mason is fine. Magenta here. Plumbing definitely doesn't hurt. Uh, don't need another cook right now. Krivak here only is farming one. We're going to give you credit wrenching one and two. We have plenty of morale to play around with. Same goes, of course, for Killjoy. You get a improved farming level two as well. Um, Jim Nanny right here, improved carrying too, and we can give him mechatronics. So we have now our first mechatronics engineer in the uh, base. Very, very neat. Jimster right here, uh, he's our master worker. Probably gonna give him one point in strength so he can help us a little bit tidy up, but other than that, he's fine. Iris, crew wrenching too. Welcome aboard. I see Venom. We are going to give you uh, not a point in plumbing uh, it certainly doesn't hurt to have a little bit more strength you can also help us build a little bit better gremlin very nice frozen hair we already had you elfie um looks pretty decent to me right now no changes necessary we have deer guard right here one of our two researchers we're gonna give you let's see cassiopeia is the other one okay cassiopeia gets applied and deer guard gets data analysis so we have both not that we need it, but hey, better have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Croc Pro Player gets both uh, researches. Definitely good to have. Um, we're going to give you the... I don't know which one looks better. You get the black one. How about that? Cassiopeia, of course, deserves a new hat. Almost. I always keep forgetting about the damn hats. Uh, Dear Guard, you also get a new one as our data analysis researcher. Very nice. And Sin. Sin. Uh, you should be able to become our second mechatronics engineer. Very, very good. A new hat while I get to break things with permission. It's Christmas in our colony, isn't it? <laughs> That's funny. I like that. <laughs> All right, let's come down here. Let's come down here. All the way through. Um, we're going to inspect it. We're going to empty the storage. And right here, we are also going to inspect it. Let's get us those data banks and rummage through it. Inspect it and rummage here as well. Computer desk, inspect it. Uh, there were some other ones up here, right? Um, did I deconstruct those on accident or demolish them on, on, on accident? Now that we have a demolisher, did that already happen? May well be. Inspect this one here as well. Let's get us those valuable, valuable data banks. Very, very good. Definitely nothing to scoff at. Can somebody please rummage through this stuff here? Okay, that one has already been done. Anything important that fell out of here? We have a spore kit seed. Okay. Um, granite, a slime, gold. Nothing fancy. Yes, I hear you, pod. Let's see. We have spicy tofu, another 12,000 calories. Uh, you know, at this point, we could bring on another dupe. How are you guys feeling about that? Let's take a look here. We have a pay who has cooking plus 13 cooking. Um, yeah, I don't think we need another cook, honestly. Decreased athletics on top of that. Not happening. How about Hassan here? Cooking, farming, and supplying. Spore kit seed from the hazardous material box. Is that what that's called? I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> cooking, farming, supplying for Hassan. We could work with that. Or digging. Um, but narcoleptic here, yeah, not doing that. We have Nisbet right here. Farming, supplying, and operating. Uh, definitely good. Uncultured, that's fine. Gourmet, that's fine. And decreased germ resistance. I honestly don't care about it. I honestly don't care about that. Um, I think we can work with this here. Uh, give me just one second here. I just need to see. Yes. Our latest member to the channel, of course, needs his own dupe. And our latest member to the channel is Brandon. Uh, Brandon became a member during the last stream. And of course, Brandon, welcome to the game. Even though I don't think you're here for today's stream, it doesn't matter though. You became a member and you are now a dupe. Welcome to the game. Let's take a look into the skills right away. Brandon right here likes farming. 
uh, improved carrying and improved tinkering. Another mechatronics engineer in the making. So, um, let's give him improved carrying. There's plenty to carry around. Let's start with that. Hide the seeds before the pip finds them. <laughs> On the bright side, we don't have a pip, I believe. So we are good. We are, we are just good. Yeah, we don't have a pip. We, we are just fine. Wall cabinet. No, this thing is actually just called a wall cabinet, I believe. Oh, fancy. The only problem is... We shouldn't have a problem. You should be able to rummage through this here, right? There's nothing that's stopping us from doing so. Let's keep on digging downward. Straight to right around there. And with the fire pole, we're going to do exactly the same thing. As soon as this here is rummaged through, um, we will take a look what we got. And of course, at the same thing, um, at the same time, we keep on digging. At an alert. Uh, spore kits are necessary for the Biba builder, or rather zombie spores are. Oh, really? Use zombie spores and steel to craft biofuel machines that can be sent into hostile environments. Defunct biobots drop harvestable steel. Hmm. Are those any good, those bots? Like, what are their capabilities compared to, um, to the little rovers? The locker here has now been rummaged through. Conan 44 gifted 10 Beatier German Engineer memberships. You have got to be kidding me. You are out of your mind, Conan. Thank you so, so much. That is amazing. Holy cow. Holy cow. Conan, I promise you the next dupe for you is on the house. Uh, golly. You crazy animal. Cheers, you crazy animal. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much. That is amazing. And welcome to all the new members to the channel. That is just awesome. Uh, what did we get out of this thing here, though? Anything good? A snazzy suit. Who should get the snazzy suit? Well, if Conan had already his own dude, but then it would, of course, be Conan. There's no question. Um, but, unfortunately, we don't have Conan in the game yet. So, how about we give it to... Um, I mean, out of fairness, it has to be a level 2 member, so it has to be Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia gets the snazzy suit because Cassiopeia is a level 2 uh, engineer on the channel. And once again, Conan, you are out of your mind, and I truly, truly appreciate that. New members to add, yes. Not gonna run out of uh, um, members for the um, for my dupes here anytime soon. And the insane thing is, you're not even a member yourself. <laughs> Gotta run, great stream. Uh, Kona Savage, thank you very much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good night. Since as that was beautiful, I couldn't agree more. That was beautiful indeed. The first time actually anybody on my channel gifted any subs, um, or better to say any memberships, and then directly 10, holy cow. All right, let's find us some bloody oil already. Dupes, get down there. Uh, that's why the fire pole is definitely a very good tool, because downwards, at least, the dupes are extremely fast. And this locker here, let's demolish it. So it's out of the way. All right, let's plop in two more ladders here. That will save a little bit of time as well. And Sin himself also joined on the support level. Sin, you are a crazy animal as well. Thank you very much for joining. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. 
All right. <laughs> Just realized I wasn't a member. I swore I was. My bad. <laughs> <coughs> you have uh, supported the stream so much, Sin. I should have gifted you one myself. Not gonna lie. <laughs> And I still see no oil. No, I see you. No, that's liquid. How often has that tricked me? Literally. I watch the only content, so I support the channel in that way. Yes. Yes, you do. You definitely do. I truly appreciate everybody who just watches. Um, that is all I'm really asking for. Not gonna lie. Yeah, but this here. How often have I looked at liquid carbon dioxide and thought, ooh, it's oil, and then it turns out it's liquid carbon dioxide, and I'm like, uh, really? But here we actually have real oil. And cinnamon. Oh my god, Sin, you crazy dude. He also gifted five more memberships to the channel. Thank you so, so much, guys. That is just absolutely incredible. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. <laughs> and that is funny as hell. I see Venom got a gifted membership to the guys that don't know yet here in the chat. Uh, I see Venom is actually my girlfriend, so you just gifted my actual girlfriend the membership. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> uh, oh, I just love you guys. You're just amazing. I couldn't ask for any better viewers and chatters, not gonna lie. Okay, but now we are in uh, this little area right here. The polluted water is surprisingly not even that cold. Not entirely sure how that happened as far as far down as we are, but I'm not complaining about it. Uh, theoretically, can we just dig into here? No, that always doesn't work yet. It's right. Uh, we need to come over here and then with a ladder, we need to make our way down here. So then we can actually submit the bioscan. We made another ability. Do it right away. And we get some more gold out of it as well. Of course, our spawn has probably turned off by now. I just saw our breathability right here. Uh, no, it hasn't. I thought we ran out of water again over here. So why is our breathability so low? Oh yeah, of course, because we deck all this syrup. <laughs> but right here, we have a bunch of oxygen. So uh, let's go in here. And let's go over here. And let's get uh, this oxygen out here. And the oxygen is helpful. And then we will see what this here is. I don't know what it is, but it certainly doesn't look like a teleporter. So, uh, looks like we are SOL one more time. Where's our carbon dioxide looking? Oh, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing to complain about here at all. I would say. Very good. Just over here. Even though we are only, quote-unquote, only at 700 grams and the color looks so daunting. The truth is it's not a problem in any way, shape, or form. So we are doing just fine. Come on. Let's get down here. And all we have is three lockers and a neural vaccinator. Luigi is here. He says, hey there. Hey there as well. I hope you're having a good evening. Assuming it's evening where you are, of course. Uh, thank you for joining. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. And let's rummage through all this stuff here while we're at it. Finally, some O2. Yes, I would say we have plenty now. Absolutely, we have plenty now. <laughs> a little bit of Rodriguez never hurts. I considered to build a Hydra uh, briefly, but... Uh, Ended up going with the um, um, good old Rodriguez instead. So we have a snazzy suit, a, another one. So let's take a look. Who else are we going to give another suit? Um, Cassiopeia already has one. We have, of course, how about basically everybody else is a level one that we have here or on supporter level. So it, um, from that perspective, doesn't really make a difference. So I'm just going to go with our most active uh, supporters and chatters that we have in the chat. 
I think that is a fair proposition, I would say. So, of course, oh, Jay's going to get one right here. Where is Sin? Sin is going to get one. And we have another one. We have a cool vest, we have a hot vest, and we have a cool vest. I probably shouldn't give out the cool vest, though. Um, protects the wearer from heat by decreasing insulation. Yeah. Uh, don't want to freeze you guys to death, so... Not going to give out the cool vest. Definitely don't need that on RAM. <coughs> so yeah, uh, we're going to leave that one just here for now. Before one of you dies on accident from freaking uh, hypothermia. Don't want that. But let's keep digging down here. And then we're going to make our way over here to this solid, uh, solid crude oil. This solid cru uh, crude oil right here is a melting point of negative 40 degrees. It's currently sitting at negative 50. So we need to find a way to heat it up by 10 degrees. Um, we don't want to dig it up because if we dig it up, we lose 50% of its mass. And 50% of 3.5 tons is nothing to laugh at. At least not in my opinion. So, definitely got to come up with a smarter solution to the problem here, uh, other than just digging it up. Well, happy to support. Well, again, I can't thank you guys enough. That's all I have to say. I really don't know what else to say. <laughs> okay, what is our temperature overall here? Low hot air? That would be an option. Um, I could make my life very simple. Um, I could literally uh, just take the hot um, water that's coming through here and the hot oxygen that we are having. Let me take a look into our F7 overlay. Um, that will be coming out of this pipe right here and come with it straight down. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, you have some polluted water right here? Yes, I do have some polluted water here right now. We could literally just take this water here and then we have to pump it out anyway. Um, go through here with a radiant liquid pipe, for example. That's um, also an option. But we could just pump hot oxygen down here. There's really not a hell of a lot stopping us from doing precisely that, I would say. Other than we have to build a pipe. But again, we get the resources back. It's not anything that we need uh, permanently. So yeah, that is definitely an option. So right here, I'm going to come down with a ladder and then just four high, dig all the way over. We also have some nice fossils here. Uh, fossils are always good to have. Uh, we can certainly make some wonderful steel out of it. <laughs> you have some, <laughs> if you're not in a hurry, yeah. <laughs> Another colony achievement. Let's see. Not even sure. What did we actually get here? Oh, enter an oil biome for the first time. I keep forgetting that that's an achievement. Distribute a thousand kilograms of oxygen using gas vents. Very nice. Recover database entry by inspecting facility ruins. Really, we haven't done that yet. I wasn't. Snazzy dudes, always awesome. Just let Sin go on at least one space adventure. All I ask, that's a done deal. Sin will go to space, that's a promise. Liquid tepidize and a bit of water, that's my, my, my su suggestion. God, suggestion is a word that I really hate because I can't pronounce it for, a, for uh, the first time I say it every time for the life of me. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I name a dupe after myself, I never survive long enough for space. Oh, you will go to space. Most definitely you will go to space. There is no question about it. Very good. Water storage is getting more instead of less. I like to see that. Liquid tapadas and a bit of water. We can most definitely do that. Uh, let's see. We still have even our heavy water wire here. We can just continue on with it because it just doesn't make a difference it doesn't hurt anything whatsoever let's bring it down here as i said i'm always open for ideas from the community and i think a liquid tapetizer will get the job done in a heartbeat so let's do it spores at the bottom of the screen Ooh, we have some spore kids oh look at those bad boys 
Thankfully, they are not a problem at all. Uh, another question is, seeing those. How much uranium do we have now? 1,090 kilograms. That is uh, not quite enough for what I'm planning on doing here very soon. Not quite enough at all. Thankfully, we just happened to find a bunch. Um, where can we dig in? Right here, if we dig through, we should find us a bunch of uranium. Check the temp overlay. Petrified fossil. Okay. Unlocking full access to the fossil catch buried beneath the ancient, the ancient specimen requires excavation of all deposit sites. An ancient, a frozen, an amber, and a petrified fossil. Okay. So do I literally just walk there and I uh, dig it up? All right. Very good. Also, once again, not gonna lie, never done any of this here. That was most definitely nothing that was there when I played the game last time. <laughs> yes, the liquid tepidizer is here. Of course, it can't do a damn thing because uh, there's no fluid. That's why we bring the bot lamp here in. And we're just gonna go ahead and... Should we use polluted water? Does it make a difference? Uh, you know what, let's throw just a little bit of water in here. It doesn't take a lot. Enable out a bottle. And, uh, yeah, let's go. I'm gonna priority, of course. Right here. We're gonna come through. Just like this. We have a neural vaccinator here. And, of course, after this amount of support, Sin is going to get the neural vaccinator. Um, it's gonna be this simple. Once again, I would give it to Conan if we already had a dupe for Conan, but we don't right now. So we're going to give it to Sin, and chances are extremely high that we will find another one very, very soon. <laughs> of course, water is not going to work like this. I should have thought about that. What am I thinking? It's freezing immediately. So uh, let's do that differently. Let's build us a uh, in plumbing. Where are we at? Pitcher pump. Let's do it with polluted water. Even though polluted water still has a freezing point of negative 20, I hope that it stays together long enough. Well, we're only putting 200 kilograms in here, though. Um, and we, it needs to be submerged. Yeah, it's not going to fly. We got to do this differently. What we are going to do here is we are going to tear this one back out. We're going to make it very simple. We're going to build a row of um, insulated tiles down here. Fill then this area here up with water in this insulated tile area. And as soon as it's nice and hot, then we're going to release it further down. It's that simple. If you sweep up all the debris, the PO2 may work. You think so? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But we can try it. You know what? Screw it. Let's try it. I mean, what do we have to lose here? I'm going to cancel it. Uh, we're going to get rid of this stuff right here. Um, I'm just going to temporarily build us a few storage bins right here. Um, I hope three of them are enough. And I'm not going to plop anything in there. That should make a difference. And let's see what does Sin get out of this thing. Uh, the duplicate has an unwaveringly positive outlook on life. That certainly sounds like Sin. Stress, negative 20 degrees. How cold is the oil? Negative 50 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. Even with the debris gone. Add one tile to the right. You mean right here? Yeah, that could work. But even then, it's still gonna freeze, though. 10 degrees. Let's see here. Is that a number 9 priority? Yes, it is. Set up a pump instead of a pitcher and a water drop off. Yeah, I could put a pump over here. That would definitely be possible. And let's uh, stop getting rid of this here real quick. Uh, let's. How about we build this here first? Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, 
Come on, guys. Let's stop this here as well. <laughs> Since this, I'm a happy nihilist. <laughs> if you weren't before, you're definitely now. <laughs> That is probably the best idea I've read so far. From Croc. I could just dig over here. Screw the pitcher pump. Uh, that would flood it immediately. If I just literally dig in here like this. That should flood it instantly. That's what we're gonna do. That is the easiest, fastest solution to the, to the problem. Most definitely. I like that a lot. Let's do it. Of course, we don't really have any oxygen down here. The dupes are not happy about it, so... They're not really digging a hell of a lot, but... Oh, uh, well... That was actually more than I expected. Good that we have some really good diggers in our team here. Jay himself. And Mason is here. And uh, let's see. Bring it up. Turn it on. There we go. That should get the job done. Who cares? They're dupes. They're built to suffer. You're not wrong. <laughs> and let's take a look here. Our polluted water is fighting against the cold. Very nice. With the amount of water that we have, do we still need this block here? Let's see. We're not overflowing it yet, though, so it can't be that much water. Better to leave it there for now. Still have 144,000 calories. How is our ration box looking? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, our ration box is not looking too hot because it's uh, full to the brim. That's why. Um, let's see. Let's build one here, build one here, build one there. I just put three notches down here. Actually, that's not gonna work. <laughs> build one here. Build one there. Build one there. I put them too close together. We do still want to have a floor. Uh, what did I just say about the floor? Oh, it's too high. Oh my god. You dupes. Um, is there a floor that fits in there? No, that's what I thought. My mistake. It's okay, though. Ration box. Not over there. Can I build it, please? Thank God. There we go. That's what we want. Good grief. everything in there. Bristle berries. Bristle berries go straight to the oven. We don't really need to store them. Lop. Copy the settings. That should be enough ration boxes here for a couple days or so. There we go. Much better. How are we doing down here? Now we are overflowing. Uh, we need a little bit more. Let's see how much more we can get over here. Probably not a hell of a lot. I had over 1 million food today. How is tech looking, by the way? You mean our um, technology tree? Our research tree? Um, not too hot. Um, we still don't have material study. We just ignored that up until now. We haven't done anything in that direction at all, actually. Um, not a hell of a lot that we can do right now that we really need. Um, advanced automation down here. Sure, let's get us some AND, OR, buffer, and filter gates. But not that we need them right now, so it doesn't matter. Uh, let's take a look into radiation real quick. Because when we take a look around here, we can see we don't really have a lot of radiation on this map. We don't have any crashed satellites that we could utilize. We do have Cassiopeia. We could just uh, lock her into a room, I guess. And then we have space. And that's about it. So we probably have to mess around with those radiation lamps right here. Um, not gonna lie, I know how they work, but I also have never actually used them before. Uh, but for today, 
or better to say for this area right here, for this base, that may be what we will have to use because I don't really see another option. Keonis is back with the stats of 48 minutes between ads. I mean, I would argue that's that's fair. 48 minutes, that's basically an entire episode of a TV show. I think I think that's okay. I could deal with that. So yeah, that's better than I expected it to be, quite honestly. So that's good. Uh, now we can definitely tear this tile here out, though. And have this entire area here properly heated up. Let's take a look in F3. Yes, you can see it. Very nice. This oil here should melt very, very soon. Oil is getting there? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We need to get down to, what is it, 36.1 degrees for it to actually melt. We'll be there in no time. The tile goes away. And now the entirety of this area here will be heated up very nicely. Uh, we dug into this area right here. Um, let me, instead of constantly looking, let's plop the uranium here. Let's get rid of everything that's new so we can actually have an overview of how much uranium we have. What else can we do here? Um, in the F4 overlay, we can see the uranium ore here really nicely. We have a good spot right here. We have a good spot right over here. And then right here we have once again this Biobot Builder, which we can't just walk through as a matter of fact. Here we have Liquid Chlorine, which we don't care about. Um, was the solid oil 2 tons? It is actually much more than that. It's actually 3.5 tons. Um, yes, I know it will expand very quickly. Um, but honestly, I don't exactly know what to do about it. The only thing that I can think of is to really quickly put in two tiles right here and at least block that off. So it doesn't flow over here. Uh, but the oil is heavier than the polluted water, so it should stay on the bottom. Um, it will probably just push the polluted water upwards and uh, brings it back into this area right here. Should be okay. I'm using a radiation lamp to run rap -hole generators to deliver 99 rap -holes per push of a switch. Using automation with rap -hole sensors to trip the power. I'll have to look into that because I know they're using uranium ore. And they gave me to depleted uranium ore back. But that's basically the extent that I know um, about these radiation lamps right here. They also don't really tell me how much rats they're producing or anything. So I'm not entirely sure what is coming out of this thing. I think YouTube fixed a bug for ads every 5 to 10 minutes. I know that was an issue for a bit. Really? 5 to 10 minutes? Good God. That is definitely way, way, way too much. Like I said earlier, I have it set to the lowest setting that uh, YouTube allows me. Uh, it doesn't get any lower than that. And I just hope it's not uh, too detrimental to the viewer experience. That is exactly why I'm asking those questions. Because um, I don't have a problem turning them off completely if, um, if it's too bad for you guys. Piece of ladder here. Let's get us all the uranium we can. We're up to 1700 kilograms. Very good. All the way up here. Let's give it a higher priority here on the top. Let's see something like this you should do. I get 703 rad in the first tile using 16.7 grams of uranium. 703 rads? Holy shit. <laughs> That's a lot of wood right there. Or in this case, a lot of rads, I guess. Oh, well, I'm not complaining. That sounds very good. Suck Gamer. Hi, good morning, bro. Good morning to you as well. For me here, it's uh, 9 o'clock in the evening. But definitely good morning to you as well. Truly appreciate you joining. Croc says another ad. It is insane how different the experience is here between viewers. It's just nuts. That is not how that should be in any way, shape, or form, if you ask me, but... <sighs> yeah. If YouTube ever wants to be a serious um, uh, competitor to Twitch, they really gotta figure that out, I guess. 
I don't even know how many there are on Twitch. I don't watch Twitch. But I'm assuming they have their uh, stuff figured out a little bit better since they have been in a market of live streaming a hell of a lot longer. Could you name me as one of your dupes, bro? I can, but there are 17 dupes currently, or 17 people waiting currently ahead of you. <laughs> oh, you are currently pretty far back in the line, and I'm not gonna lie about it. <laughs> and we currently already have 17 dupes, so I need to be careful how many more I bring on in a very short amount of time here. Um, 40 tiles, each and every one of them, 3.6 tons. I really need this tile here to melt. <laughs> That's the number one tile I need to get rid of. Why people don't use adblock is beyond me, haven't seen a YouTube ad in years. I mean, I guess some people just don't want to deal with the ad blockers. Other people just want to support creators. But... My honest truth is, I don't understand it either. <laughs> I would use one if I wouldn't have YouTube Premium. <laughs> what about you take five more dupes? I will take three more dupes. Um, I'm trying to get to 20 here, but um, five more dupes? Probably, probably out of the scope as of this moment. And our oil is coming together, melting our way through it. And look at this down here. We have another nice patch of oil. So soon we should have more than enough oil to get around here. Ad blocker prevent the creator from receiving money. I mean, that is definitely true. But again, I do see it. Um, if it is really that annoying and YouTube can't get their shit together and constantly uh, play ads every few minutes, then what choice do you have? I mean, again, I'm a content creator myself and, and I don't, I can't condone anyone or or condemn, better to say, anyone for uh, for using an ad blocker. That's, that's, that's not happening here. <laughs> uh, we are running into some trouble here because the oil is about to overflow drastically. So... We don't have a choice but to dig out more stuff here. We need to make more space. But the question is, how are we going to do this? Um, we can currently dig this high right here and this high right here. So let's bring it over here to the right. ASAP, please, because that stuff here is melting like crazy. And we already have the situation here. Hmm. Bring this here in. At the moment, it's only um, polluted water, so it really doesn't matter too much. But still, though, we need more space down here quickly and lots of it. You'll have more oil than you ever need in this game at this asteroid. Did you play the seed? <laughs> Mop up the pure polluted water. Good call. 100% correct. Let's do it. Mop it, guys. Mop it. Let's get rid of it. Okay, good. That should give us a little bit of room to breathe here. I'm gonna dig a little bit lower because right here we have a few more tiles of crude oil. Definitely want that. P9 everything is the way? Yes it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you playing cold asteroid? Yup. This is rhyme. Definitely this is rhyme. Uh, what else do we have here? This is not oil. None of you is oil. If you're not oil, you gotta go. Very, very nice. Suffocating who? Oh, you're stuck down here now. Of course, I'm blind as a bat. Uh, yeah. 
need to build two pieces of ladder right here. Already on number nine priority. Um, until they come here, though, you will be dead. What do we have here? We have Ignis Rock. Let's uh, cancel the build. And let's build it out of Ignis Rock so you can do it yourself. How is that? Come on, Mason. Get out of there. Oh, you're not going to die on me in the last second. No, you better not. That was a close call. My god. I like the series, bro. I truly appreciate it. I'm glad you do. Definitely love to hear it. Thank you. Saved by Yucky Lungs. Whew. That was a close call. We almost lost a dupe here. Thankfully, we had Igneous Rock nearby. Otherwise, old Mason would have been screwed. <laughs> On here we should be okay, the dupes can go in and out. Um, we have now 2.2 tons of uranium. I'm not mining the uranium actually for um, for the lamp. Well, we will need it for the lamp as well, of course, but that is actually not my main reason for mining it. Um, let's see, here's another piece. We can come through here, grab us these few pieces. That's actually bleach stone right here. Uh, that's fine with me. Build the ladder first, oil will defrost. Um, right here, we are 41, 41, yeah, we will need a ladder, you're right, uh, we will need a ladder right here, and then as soon as it melts right there, and then as soon as it melts right here as well. I hate it when dupes take time to have a chat while suffocating and, and not reaching the nearest O2 because of it, yeah, for real. And the old metal still gets stuck? Yes. Yep. Good call, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, nice. Was that a wape I heard? Really? You heard that? Apparently, my uh, my noise gate is not set up properly then. Yes, that is, an, uh, that is a wape you heard. <laughs> Alright, oil. How are we looking temperature-wise? Of course, it is... Uh, Nowhere near at the 50 degrees anymore. I only heard the exhale. <laughs> I usually try to turn away when I do that, but yeah. Apparently, after being here for 4 hours and 38 minutes, I must have forgotten about that. Deerguard is here. Hey, Deerguard, how are you doing today? Thanks for joining. You should have got some atmos suits by now. I do have some polluted water up here, which we'll be using very soon to get us some um, fibers in. <laughs> I see Venom says, yes, four hours. Somebody is ready for me to, uh, to get off the stream. Uh, which I will do very soon, babe. Don't worry about it. Liquid petrol expands so much. Yes, we have uh, 3.6 tons per tile here. It expands drastically. Like, uh, this is no joke here. Um, it's going to expand here. One more tile, two more tiles max, and it will flow over again, which will actually help with our polluted water. So I'm waiting for that, actually, before I dig deeper. 37, 37. There we go. Getting there, getting there. Very, very nice. Lots of fossil laying around here. All this here has been dug out by now. What is the smartest way to dig through this here? Let's take a look. I'm just going to dig all of this here up. All the ice. We're going to take it as it is. Uh, all the uranium ore. We need a lot of it, actually. I need... Let me think for a second. Roughly... Four tons... 3.6 tons, I believe, is the uh, correct number. 
So that's the bare minimum that I require right now. So. Loey G's out. Night, folks. Good night, Loey G. I hope you have a good one. Um, let's see. How do we dig through here? We could just dig all of it up. Good. Four high digging. Let's just build a piece of leather every other spot right here. And just uh, strip mine it out. That's probably the easiest way right now. And once again, right here. Hopefully no dupe gets stuck. Should be okay, though. Uh, and one more right here. There we go. Literally just simple. And then... Dig. All the way through here. All the way through to the Abyssalite. We're going to leave the Abyssalite alone. Very good. That should give us plenty of uranium now. I'm thinking about building a research reactor at the center of my base. But what you'll need the uranium for? Um, I'm trying to get rid of some germs here. Just trying to get rid of some germs here. I'm thinking about building a research reactor at the center of my base. At the center of your base. I'm not sure if that is the best idea I've ever heard, but <laughs> if you know what you're doing with the research reactor, it may work out just fine. Those things uh, can be a little bit dangerous. We have a little bit more right here that we can uh, mop up. We're going to do that right away. Not on floor. Yes, I know. We have... A bunch more tiles here, actually. Every little piece of polluted water that we can get rid of is a good thing right now. So we will. And then right here, I think it is time now that we dig two levels deeper. The other piece of ladder right here so we can get down there. And deconstruct this piece right there. Need to enrich that uranium? Yes. If you need a research or want a research reactor, then definitely. Yeah, you'll have some magma volcanoes around here. Yes, we definitely have plenty of magma volcanoes around here. I think we found two or three so far. So yeah, plenty to go around for sure. I have mine in a vacuum. I only harvest radiation. Definitely a good way to do it. Let's see, let's dig up all this polluted water right here. Too much liquid, really? Oh, 200 kilograms in one tile? I guess so. Yes, they're gonna mop up some uh, um, crude oil as well. We're gonna stop him from doing that, though. There is some around here. We're just gonna pour it back in. That's fine for right now. I just need him to... <laughs> this one tile here still has to go away. So we can actually get down here and make this here our first oil reservoir. I guess just temporarily. Put another piece of ladder right there. Should work. Leave the enriching the uranium for the bees. I don't think we have found any bees yet. I'm not entirely sure if we have any. Oh, there's an amber fossil right here. Nope, we haven't found any bees yet. I'm not sure. Are there bees on Rhyme? I actually don't even know. Yes, there are. Okay, that's good to know. Just gotta find him, I guess. What we still haven't found is our teleporter. I'm absolutely flabbergasted that we have not found this teleporter like, yet. Like, what the hell? Yes, you will find bees. Alright. Good to know. More spores to the left. Yep, over here. And look at this. Uh, oil reservoir. We actually have some uh, liquid crude oil here. Goodness. Didn't believe in it anymore.
We are now up to four and a half tons of uranium ore. Very good. Very, very good even. Okay, let's see. In automation. What do we have in here? Not what I want. In research. Medicine. Yeah, that's where we want to go. Let's go all the way down here. Doesn't matter too much. Doesn't hurt anything. So it's fine. Our oxygen is at 50%. Um, yeah, of course, because we dug up so much around here. Um, that's the only reason why it says 50%. Our actual base, though, is doing just fine. No problem at all. That's a lot of scary spore flower. Ah, they're not scary at all. They are very easy to deal with, as a matter of fact. Um, and we are getting what we need right now. Even that's not, once again, the intention. <laughs> So, one last little project for today. Let's see, where do we have some space? Where do we have some space available? Doesn't really matter too much. I have four. Yes, our polluted water is now so high. Stuck dupes, maybe? Three. Where? Could have them down here, theoretically, but there are none. These tubes here shouldn't be able to get stuck, I hope. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yep, the potential was definitely right down here that a dupe gets stuck. Thankfully, that didn't happen, though. No? But I think we are good for right now. Let's gotta dig out a little bit more. And also, we have nothing currently to um, melt anymore. So, in F2. You're not needed anymore, Liquid Tapidizer. You did your job a very, very fine, but for right now, you shall be relieved of your duties. We're gonna leave you here. Doesn't matter for right now. Just want to make sure that we have it available. Jim Nanny has hypothermia. How do you have hypothermia up here? You must have been down there a minute ago. Okay, right here we have all this polluted water with all the germs in it and all the uh, polluted water from our toilets and our sinks and all the good stuff is coming into, well, right this tank right here. So a simple solution for this problem could be um, that we build an infinite storage for our polluted water and we build it out of mechanized airlocks with a lot of uranium ore. Should be literally as simple as that. So let's give it a shot. We are going to plop it. I still don't know where to put it, honestly. Um, probably right here is probably a smart position to put it. Right here we have a four high space, so this is our natural floor anyway. So that will work out. Let's try it. I'm using mechanized airlocks because if you remember in the last stream or the stream before that, I believe we tested it out. And the mechanized airlocks give off more radiation than a manual airlock, so we're going to build mechanized. And mechanized also cost twice as much uranium ore, though. That is why I need so much uranium ore. Um, since you're into the mine, uh, min editing, a good Oni series would be the 20, 24 Let's Play tutorial segment. The live streams into one hour or, or half hours. Yeah, that is something that I have actually considered. I just don't know exactly how to split it. That is my main issue. Not gonna lie. Um, but I will be thinking about it and see what I can do about it, because having four or five hour long um, videos, I mean, the truth is, who exactly is going to watch that, right? Um, that's just the reality of it. So, this here is what we are going to build. It looks very simple, and it is, which is a very nice thing. So, right here, let's build some insulated tiles down here, so we can actually reach all this stuff. Uh, build us some ladders so we can go around here later on when we close it all off. Won't be needed anytime soon. But for right now, that's a good thing. And then, once again, four high, right here. That's going to be a natural floor one more time. So, let's put that in. And that will be the last project for today. And it should be completed in absolutely no time. And plumbing. You're going to grab us a liquid pump made out of anything. And we're going to put it into this tank. Right here. Coming through. Right there. Um, yeah, 
Of course, this pipe that's currently going down here will soon be going into right there. So we can just reutilize it to come back up. That will work fine. Just as simple as that. One beautiful long supercut of pure efficient progress to cozy up to. <laughs> that may be something actually to just cut together the builds. Um, and uh, try to make a video that way. That would definitely be an option actually. I like that. And Cassiopeia is here. Hey Cassiopeia, how are you doing today? You are literally catching us at the tail end of the stream. Just one more little project that we have going on right here. And then we will slowly but steadily call it a day. Uh, down here on the bottom. Oops, of course, don't feel it to come down here and actually uh, get this oil back down here, which will be really nice. This here is our crude oil storage area that we will be utilizing from now on, at least for a little while. So, yeah. Did you find the very bottom yet? No. Nope, not even close. I found a petrified fossil, but that is about the extent of it. <laughs> we will keep on digging down there though once we have our infinite storage we will have space for all this polluted water here as well so shouldn't be a problem anymore at that point so right here we have this infinite storage right as soon as it's done we're gonna see if the radiation that we're getting is enough to kill those germs and I actually already know the answer it'll be more than enough Very nice dupes. Of course, most of them are running around with hypothermia because they were all the way down here and they're not too happy about it. Uh, not that you put my dupe in there to kill germs. That was actually uh, a uh, point of discussion here not too long ago. <laughs> Come on, build it all. Couple more doors. This door here on the top. You're gonna tell it to open that door. So we can't get rid of all this oxygen in here. The other thing that we will need is a liquid pump. Built out of anything. It's not gonna get hot in there, so it doesn't matter. We will need an insulated liquid pipe coming out, of course. And in F2, we will need some power. Um, looks like this particular power wire right here doesn't actually have too much hooked up to it. Uh, 1445, that's totally fine. Therefore, we're just going to come through here and into there. A lot more efficient than the chlorine room? Yes, a lot more efficient. By a hell of a lot, actually. <laughs> Especially to build it. I do, just like usual, want to have a little bit of automation though. So we're going to plop us an automation wire in here. And uh, the only problem is we need to be careful with those doors right here. Uh, we don't want to hook those accidentally up to the automation wire. That wouldn't end well. As a matter of fact, there's actually nothing at all stopping me. Hold on one second here. Not all, just automation. Uh, because in here, um, we're not going to have anything in here. Uh, that's just going to be sitting empty. Unless, now we have only two tiles. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Just going to put the switch inside. How much radiation we have inside? Let me build the last one and you will know. I guess Brandon right here is finding out the hard way right now. <laughs> um... Radiation absorption, zero rads. That doesn't sound right, but of course, sure, why not? Come on, build the last one. And then get out of there. And then, while you're at it, pick up all this stuff so we can get rid of it. Then we're going to give all of this here number and priority because they're about to have to uh, lock them all. That'll have to happen. 
So we're gonna do this quickly. How about we lock this door down here? So you don't constantly open this door every five seconds. Just to walk through instead of just climbing over it. Oh, you dupes. There we go. And of course, because this thing here was moving around the entire time, they didn't pick it up, as usual. While we're at it, we can also say uh, suppress the current notification. And then we're going to copy that setting to all the other doors. Of course, with the exception of this top one right here. And once again, copy it to this one. There we go. Now you're set to auto. I wanted to copy you here. You're closed to all of them. And that's apparently not a thing. Oh my god. Okay, I do it manually. One by one by one. There we go. Are you happy now? And now we take a look at the radiation. We have a total ratio radiation of about 112. Well, doors need to be closed to actually get the real number. You lock yourself in. Oh, you guys. Get out of there. Lock it again. Are we happy now? All right, now we look a hell of a lot better. So now we can go to F6 and we can go with this pipe straight over to here. That should get the job done right away. And as soon as the water is high enough, that is actually uh, pushing out all the oxygen and we have only polluted oxygen left. We are going to close the top door here as well. And then uh, this pipe here, usually I would say, can be deconstructed, but all we are actually going to be deconstructing is this liquid vent here. And then this liquid bridge here, we don't need that either. Very, very good. Now we just need some dupes to actually use the bathroom, so we can get a first glimpse of what this is going to look like. Can we get some polluted water? There we go, thank you. So the polluted water comes in, it has currently 300,000 germs, and the germs will be slowly but steadily annihilated as soon as it actually stops putting more in. There we go, let's take a look at the polluted water in... Not entirely sure... Ah, here, surface gems. We have a change rate of negative 313 per second, they are of course overpopulated and exposed to 125 rats. Um, they're actually going down drastically here. Now our second shift just pumps in a few more germs. There they come. And now, as soon as that is done, the rest of the shift, no more should be added to it. Which should allow us to get rid of this here very, very quickly. Which is a very nice thing, honestly. But for now, we just gotta fill this here up first. And once it's full, it should be a hell of a lot better because the amount of water that is in here also matters a lot. The more water we have, the better it is actually. So in F6, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna hook this pipe here back up. Um, this pipe right here is coming from the bottom. Oh yeah, that was our old pipe eh, that we used earlier. That's fine. And then right here, another liquid bridge that goes upwards, which should once again bring all the stuff over here to the left. We have power down there. No, we did not get up to power, of course. Bring a power wire in. Still more than enough capacity. We are good. There we go. The water is flowing. And now we just fill this thing up. Hopefully that works. Yes, it does. We do have a piece of carbon dioxide in here, of course, which may make some trouble here shortly. We will see how that looks. I'm running at 10 times speed right now, just to get this here done a little bit quicker. And yes, the carbon dioxide will get stuck in there, probably. Um, 
What are we gonna do about it? We could open either one of those doors here. Um, well, we're just gonna open this one here, honestly. Let's open it. Priority is on nine. Somebody should do it right away. Door is open. Now we're gonna wait until this carbon dioxide here get pu gets pushed out, which should happen rather sooner than later. And then we're gonna close those two doors and we should be good. Come on. The first tile of water is here. And now we're just waiting for the second tile to push this here up and out, please. Please tell me it's going to work. <laughs> I guess I just built somewhat of an Asher waterfall on accident. <laughs> my god oh god no matter what you try it never happens in the way that you expect to huh <laughs> oh my god we have an accidental Asher waterfall going guys you're not gonna you you you, you couldn't do it if you wanted to if you tried your hardest it wouldn't happen I promise you that <laughs> it's just an absolute joke. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, now what? <laughs> uh, yeah. Water fail, not fall. Yes, that is a water fail indeed. Is it the switch too, maybe? I don't think it has anything to do with the switch, though, because the switch shouldn't have any effect on how the gas behaves in the game. Yeah, but sure enough, we are down here up to 1,200 kilograms per tile. And just to mention that on the side here, no surface germs. Or germs, I mean. So the more water we have, the better it actually is. Um, as I said earlier, um, even though we are still pumping constantly 56,000 germs per, uh, per second in there. You can remove a switch to delete it here, yeah, but that is a problem. Uh, that is an actual problem because if I now build a tile here, that will mean that it breaks my waterfall and therefore it will break my infinite storage. I guess my only choice is to just close off those mechanized airlocks and uh, live with it. Not that it matters in any way, shape, or form. What matters is that my liquid pump is in here. It's just going to look odd. But that's my only choice, because otherwise I have uh, a lot of polluted water everywhere. If I do it in any other way. Let's see, that shouldn't break it. Yeah, that doesn't break it. It will break it, though, the moment I uh, close this door right here. And if anything happens to my gas right here, or who knows what reason, uh, the Asher waterfall will be broken, and therefore, it will escape. So yeah, I don't have a choice, I have to close this here, and I just... But the problem is, now I have all the polluted water up here, no matter what I do, I'm screwed. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, if you wanted to do this, you couldn't. I promise you, there's no way in hell. That you would have a chance if you try to do this. Uh, let me cut this pipe here for a second so I don't pump any more in there because that's going to end in a disaster here in about five seconds probably. Let's see what's going to happen. With a little luck the carbon dioxide gets pushed up to here but I don't see why that would happen. Yes, it happened. It actually works. Oh my god, that was lucky. If it would have stayed right there in this tile we would have been screwed. <laughs> All right, that's what that actually should look like. <laughs> My God. Oh, crap. So, yeah. Now, we have a storage that has basically nothing in it. But we obviously want to get water out, right? 
Um, how are we going to do that? We're going to turn off our pump right here. And that is why I started to researching the sensors. Um, we have our, um, in plumbing, our liquid ch pipe germ sensor here. For that, we need plastic, which we don't have yet, but we will have soon. Um, and on top of that, we will need a liquid shutoff. Those are the two components that we need to make 100% sure that we only get water out. That is actually germ free. And yeah, very, very simple. All you need is an infinite storage built out of mechanized airlocks. You don't even need that many. That is the truth. I just built it this way to be 100% safe that um, all the germs get annihilated basically instantly. Um, but yeah, usually you can get away with maybe three here in the bottom. You're totally fine. And yeah. Wow, I came on and immediately saw some amazing Escher waterfall. <laughs> uh, I wish I could truthfully say that is exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> but yeah, that is uh, actually, that was completely unintentional. But yeah, here we are. A couple more tiles digging out down here on the bottom. And we will call it a day. Wait, what happened to the waterfall? I looked away. Yes, I uh, closed the doors right here. And it annihilated itself. Uh, Azure Waterfall is something really nice if you have it in a, in a controlled environment. But it is currently not in a controlled environment, so that is a problem. <sighs> Alright, let's take out those last few tiles right here, and then we will call it a day. Right here. Mop it up. And we are good. Alright. I think we have accomplished quite a lot today. We built us a spawn, which is a completely fully built Rodriguez down here on the bottom. Of course, we have a gas pump that we don't even utilize for anything yet. We have an infinite storage of four hour hydrogen gas that we are also currently basically not using. Because at the moment we only have two hydrogen generators. But yeah. They are basically taking the entire load right now. We are up to 25.7 tons of coal. We are up to 189,000 kilocalories. We have our first smooth hatch farm, um, which is just laying here right now because I didn't set it to smooth hatches, I guess. But other than that, I think our base looks a hell of a lot better than it did at the beginning of the stream. And we made it all the way up to cycle 129. But yes. I would say thank you very much, guys, for joining. If you have not liked the video yet, I would truly appreciate it if you would leave me a like. And then, I hope I see you next time. Probably next uh, week on Saturday at around the same time as this week will most likely be the next stream. But if you want to stay up to date, check out my Discord channel and you will be the first to know when I stream the next time. And of course, if you haven't subbed yet, leave me a sub once again. Would highly appreciate it. And with that, I say thank you and peace.